Hollywood for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Welcome. Fade to Black. The Spoke Radio. For the masses. Alright, let's do this. It's Thursday, it's Thursday night, October 25th, 2018. 301 days into the new year. 64 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in the middle of beautiful downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world. All across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and... KGRA The Planet. I am your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? Hey, hey, hey. It's Thursday night. I mean, how great does it get? It just it doesn't get any better. It's Thursday night. It is Fader Night. Open lines all night long. That's right. It's Fader Night. Write this down. Take out a pen. I'm telling you what to do right now. That's not right. Is that right? Is that too strong? Is that is that just too strong? <laughs> Take out a pen. Write this down. 323-825-5045 or... Three two three two seven five nine six nine five. Calls are already coming, you know. Uh, or eight one eight nine two one six nine two nine. You know, I'm going to be nice. I'm 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 actually going to start putting calls on hold. <laughs> the intro music isn't even done. I didn't even, okay, all right. Three two three eight two five five zero four five three two three two seven five. 9695 or 818-921-6929. Oh, you know, I just remembered something. I'm going to do this right now. You have to excuse me. I've got to go over here and check on something that I didn't do. Um, bah, 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 bah. I was going to have a friend of mine call in tonight. Uh, his name is Bruce Pfeiffer. I was going to have Bruce call in and tell it, Bruce and I uh, uh, grew up together. We're roommates uh, for a long time in uh, Indianapolis. And Bruce uh, let me know about his UFO sighting that he had when he was a kid. And we talked about it. I was like, hey, 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 hey. this is a few days ago. I'm like, uh, I'm, I've got to hit the call in number is... Let's give them um, three, two, three, eight, two, five, five, zero, four, five. Boom, done. We are live now. We are live now. I'm doing this. This is I. I, I forgot to do this, and he was supposed to reach out to me. I hope he's up. 
Um, and I think um, I think he's using his cell phone, which I have. Okay. All right. Done. And we'll see if uh, Bruce calls in. He's <laughs> one of my oldest friends on planet Earth. And it was just really funny because we were talking um, uh, earlier this week. And he just hit me with that in this conversation. He goes, hey, man, I have tell you about the, the, my UFO. I said, no. <laughs> so he immediately calls me and he tells me, I was like, man, I don't want to hear any more about this. We need to uh, get you on the show. I mean, how cool is that? And 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 we used to play guitar together. I mean, when we were, I mean, young, right? Young, young, young. So went to high school together, right? The whole shot, uh, same neighborhood. And uh, so there you go. I've, oh, he's texting me now. All right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'll wait for that to come in. And uh, so it's open lines all night long, 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695 or 818-921-6929. You know what to do. You can follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio at J Church Radio. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. You can uh, go conversations there. Of course, we have... Uh, uh, chat rooms over in Spreaker, chat rooms over at KGRA The Planet. So whatever you would like to do, you can also email Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. And uh, bah, 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 bah. okay, and there you go. Bruce is going to call in. There you go. All right. Uh, let's see here. Should we have him at the bottom of the hour? All right. Uh, let's see here. 20 minutes, right? Uh, 20 minutes do, 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 do. and see see I know his number see so I'll be able to put him at the front of the line in front of all of you is it see you got to know somebody to pull that off yeah yeah you got to sweet talk Rita if you want to get to the front of the line that's that's what it is you know that's it right I no shame in my game I'll just let you know. Okay, let's get to this breaking news so we can get to the bottom of the hour. Lots to talk about tonight. I know what you guys are expecting, so I'm sure we'll do some of that too. But breaking news. A total of 10 bombs have now been distributed throughout the United States. Today, former Vice President Joe Biden and actor Robert De Niro uh, were both targets. The packages generally are similar in appearance, manila envelopes with a bubble wrap interior, each with six forever American flag stamps, affixed computer printed address labels with misspelled words, and a return address belonging to a Florida office for the Democratic U.S. Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz. It's unbelievable. Now, I, I, I want to say this. I have no no ways to paint any anything on this, and certainly my opinion doesn't matter. But I, I will say this to everybody listening, and I don't care who you are, where you come from, or what what you what what makes you chill. I, I I you know what life is short. Do your thing. But one thing is for sure: in this country, if you live here. You're an American citizen. You live here. It is America first. We're all Americans first. Everything else is underneath that. That is it. And I've always said this on this show. Okay? Always, always. And believe me, I have uh, lived, I have had the benefit of living all over this country. I've lived in the South. I've lived in the Midwest. I lived out here in the West. I've lived, you know, I've, I've tasted. I've been to every state. I've been to almost every capital city of every. I've been, I've seen this country. I know what it's about. And, and uh, we're Americans here. And right now, this is an uncomfortable feeling. And I don't dig it. And as Americans, none of us should that's it we are americans first and that is all i have to say there is no other position for anybody to have and that's it all right on to mars for more than a month now a european orbiter circling mars has been watching a long plume cloud smoke thing on mars 
The cloud has remained in place over a mountain called Arciamans near the Martian equator since September 13th. No volcanic process is produced in the cloud. The volcano hasn't, are you ready? Hasn't been active for about 50 million years. I don't know how they know that, but they're standing by that. The cloud is full of water ice created by airflow along the side of the volcano. And I was thinking about this earlier today. I was imagining what is going on right on Mars. I just, you know, I kind of like did a little remote viewing thing. What is going on? You know, now it's water. It's vapor, right? Think about what, 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 what? Could it be terraforming? Would water vapor, a constant water vapor plume of that magnitude, could it help create an atmosphere? Could it be putting what? Could it create clouds? Could it be enough? Could there be something else magnetically going on? Right? They don't have... The same magnetic shielding that we do here could, could, could some, oh, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And for them to say that Mars is dead and this is going on, well, obviously it ain't. <laughs> and this is the public side of it. You can only hide it for so long, right? Something like that's going on and we could sit and watch it. Yeah, there's something going on. They got to admit to it. And to say that the water is full of, Water ice. Mm. I'm really digging it. Also, yesterday, Tesla back in the news. Hey, did you see Elon's tweet today? What was it? Send me, send me your dankest memes. I like that, man. I, 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 I got to steal that. See, the thing is, that's the kind of tweet that I like. That's a cool tweet. That's a tweet. I can stand behind, but now I can't send it. <laughs> I can't do it. And I thought about it. Um, uh, I thought about it. If I did it, would it be like in homage, you know, in in tribute to Elon? Is is it like in the okay zone there? Is, is that all right? Because everybody would know I, I ripped it off. Or, you know, and I can't say, you know, well, anyway, send me your dankest memes. So as I'm holding my phone, I'm watching this, you know, every second it was 100 more likes. And every second, like 100 more retweets, 100 more comments. It was like I've never seen seen anything blow up like that it went from and when i picked up my phone and saw it it was like at a thousand right and by the time i put my phone down three four minutes later it was up to like 19 20 000 likes and five thousand retweets or five thousand comments five thousand memes i was looking at the the memes were great man that was just genius how did i get off on that hold on i gotta i gotta reel myself back in oh yesterday that's right Let's get this back on track here. Yesterday, Tesla beat Wall Street earning expectations. That's right. And this is such, I mean, for me, huge news. But the numbers are ginormous. They posted a record profit for the third quarter after a strong production run of and sales of its Model 3. Tesla reported 6.8 6.8 billion in revenue against an expected 6.3. The Model 3 is now the best-selling car in the US in terms of revenue and the fifth best-selling car in terms of volume. That's insane. Tesla also reported $881 million in free cash flow, shattering an analysis of $191 million. Un- what a turnaround. 
smoke a little weed on a little internet podcast, <laughs> right? Little puff puff give. Unbelievable. And then he turns around today and says, post your dankest memes. I like Elon Musk. I do. There's something about that guy that I just think is all right. It's Thursday night. It is fader night. It is open lines all night long. The call-in numbers are 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695 or 818-921-6929. All right, all right. Let's get straight to it here. Happy birthday to today, Chili Pepper Stick Man Chad Smith. Man, dare I say drumming God? Chad Smith is 57 years old. Adam Goldberg today is 48. Adam, who was so good in Dazed and Confused, so good. In Private Ryan, saving Private Ryan. Remember that scene, scene to the death, right? With the German soldier upstairs and gets the knife to the chest. Oh, man. Adam Goldberg. Remember that scene? Yeah, Adam Goldberg. Today is 48 years old. On this day in history, OTD, big one. Big one for me. Big one. 1980. Australian rock gods ACDC earned their first top 40 hit with You Shook Me All Night Long. Now, I'm going to say, in high school, 1980, 1980, you were not cool. And I mean this. You were not cool if your ghetto blaster did not have ACDC back in black playing nonstop. Take the tape out, turn it around, pop it back in, play side two. Take it back out, turn it around, play side one. That's what you did. Uh, You pulled up in your car, your mom's car, your dad's car, windows down, ACDC back in black. That was was it. (laughs) That was it. And that's right. You shook me all night long. Oh, man. My band. My band in high school, man. I think we played every... We play a party. I think we played every one of those songs. (laughs) Oh, man. We only sang like one. The rest of them were all instrumentals. Those were the days. Fader fact. It's been vetted, so get ready. Fried chicken was brought to America from Scotland. (laughs) What happened to this show? What happened to this show? Somebody, somebody help me. It is Fader night. It's Thursday night. I'm in a great mood drinking some really good River Moon coffee. Sometimes when you brew, you know, it's it's about it's about the type of grind and we can alter our grinds, you know, and I do. Sometimes I'll go fine or sometimes I'll go more coarse. It's a different taste of of the coffee and it it happens a different way when it brews. Uh, you know, a- anyway, uh, I don't want to get too sidetracked here, but once in a while, you know, a little more coffee, a little less, you know, there's, there's things to do with it. Right. So anyway, once in a while, it's bleeping perfect. Like right now, river moon coffee, fade to black blend. Incredible. Mm. So yeah, I am sure I am positive that there are a lot of you right now that are expecting me to say something right now to bring us all together, right? To address the situation that we're all facing. Well, you know, you got to say, which one? Which situation, Jimmy? Which one are you talking about, mystery man? You need to clarify. You need to... You need to help me out here. I need to know what you're talking about. And yeah, I thought about it a lot. And we'll be having some fun on the phones here in just a bit. And we can talk about whatever you want. I get that. You can ask me anything. Yep, I said it. You can say anything. You've seen something. We're going to do all of that. 
But before we do, let me just say this. Last week, someone got me a bag of these coconut cluster things. Vegan, organic, non-GMO verified gluten-free with barf, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Hold on. Chia seed. Ah, God. And the bag sat there for a few days. Three days ago, I decided to crack it open. It's coconut, right? I like coconuts. So how, how, how bad, you know, could it be, right? I loved Almond Joys as a kid. I would bite off Almond Joys. You know, Almond Joys are tricky. I don't have something I can use for an Almond Joy in here. i got to represent. I would, um, you take an Almond Joy. Ah, here, perfect. I'll use my Eye of Ra. Okay, so this is my Almond Joy, Eye of Ra. But, so you take an Almond Joy as a kid. You got the almond in the middle, right? That would be the eye. You got the almond in the middle. And I would bite off one end, right? I'd spin it around. And I bite off the other end. So in the middle now, the third bite is all almond. Oh, man. Loved them. Loved Almond Joy. That third bite was the shiz nickel. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So back to the uh, giant bag of uh, seeds. <laughs> the vegan bag of chia seeds. <laughs> Can't say it. But anyway... I I take a chance. I roll the dice. I pop one in my mouth, and I crunched it, right? And I about fell to my knees. It just it just melted. The flavors, it they just danced. And I was like, holy crap, right? Vegans ain't all that bad. <laughs> this stuff is amazing. I... I couldn't believe it. I munched on them all day long. And then the next day, right? So I go back, and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't imagining things. And I wasn't. It's unbelievably delicious. I mean, like addictive. Then yesterday, same thing. Unbelievable. Friggin' magic bag of insanity. And I'm not playing around here. I'm talking about the real deal. So, I check the ingredients. All right? Yeah, yeah. It's coconut, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds. Can't say chia. I need some coffee. All organic. Blah, blah, blah. But... In the ingredients, there it was. Pure cane sugar. (laughs) Organic pure cane sugar. (laughs) There it is. The happy bag, man. And I'm just like, you know, and I had to go back. And and I read the I'm, I'm reading I'm chat I'm just verifying everything, right? There it is, you know, gluten free, vegan, all organic, this that, all organic, uh, all source certified, verified, GMO, da da da. <laughs> Pure cane sugar. Now, obviously, even chia seeds are edible. If you coat them in pure cane sugar. So, this is the thing. And this is where I'm going with all of this. The magic of the combination of pumpkin seeds and sunflower and chia seeds and coconut with pure cane sugar and making these coconut cluster things, it's unbelievably great. And I I, I loved it. And I sat back to myself and thought, what a great country we live in. It is so great. 
to be an American, that this wonderful thing is put together, all vegan, gluten-free, guilt-free, I guess, see, this is the thing, and this is where um, the vegans are hiding behind stuff, right? I I didn't know. Now, um, certainly um, somebody out there in the vegan world can let me know, because I don't have the vegan law of ethics of what is supposed to be eaten and what is not and and what is considered this and I'm sure that there are vegan subgroups where that you know they won't speak to them over there because they eat this and over here they only eat that and over you know and and wear this and wear that I understand I I, I get that but but having this label you know labeled so obviously uh, and and then to hide the cane sugar, or are they not? Right? Are they not? So that's uh, that's my thing. And I thought this is such a great country. This is an un- unbelievable place to live. And and as Americans, we all need to recognize that that we're Americans first. And that little bag took me away from the insanity. It took me away from things. For a minute, you know, but it uplifted me. It made me happy. I was dancing. My head was clear. I was just unbelievable. Pure cane sugar. (laughs) Pure cane sugar. I figured it out. So there you go. It's Fader Night. It is Thursday night. It is open lines all night long. Got lots of stuff. Everything is on the table. Like I said, ask me anything. Say anything. Bring your stories, bring your your opinions, and and let's do what we always do here, which is have a wonderful, fun conversation. This is the barbershop. Let's do it. I'm going to take a break, and when I come back, uh, hopefully I'll get to Bruce Pfeiffer first, and uh, we'll talk to my friend from Indianapolis. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. The numbers are 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695 or... 818-921-6929. It's Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'm on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. I'll be right back. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you know who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go back, Lee Teppy. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. Times are changing. The circus of politics, healthcare's low standards and high prices... And let's not forget food quality. What to do? Arm yourself with Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com. In a world of chemical imbalance and poor air and water quality, it's time you make a move. 
Log on to GetTheTea.com and stock up on organic, non-GMO supplements. Don't forget the tea. Cleansing your body never felt so good. And we have a brand new tea called Takedown Tea, which helps support healthy glucose. All natural body support so you can be at your best naturally. All you have to do is log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. We're not a fad that comes and goes. We are the real deal. Join us and armor up. GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Changing America's health one tea bag at a time. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Do you want to lose weight but have no idea where to begin? The Fast Start Diet, a three-day weight loss plan, is the answer. Three days of nutritionally balanced, calorie-restricted meals delivered right to your door. No shopping, no measuring, and no cooking. Everything is prepared for you and ready to eat at home or on the go. The Fast Start Diet has all the amazing benefits of intermittent fasting without starving. We've helped thousands of people who have struggled to reach their weight loss goals. Isn't it time we helped you? With the Fast Start Diet, you'll lose weight and feel great. Find Fast Start Diet on Amazon or go to faststartdiet.com and use promo code TALK to get 10% off your first box. And as a special bonus, Fast Start will include their number one rated Lipo 3 Appetite Suppressant Spray free with your order. This is Jimmy Church. And whatever your diet plans are, do what I did. Go to FastStartDiet.com. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Jimmy Church Church Radio. All right. Welcome back. Thursday night, Fader Nights. Open lines all night long. It's the best night of the week. Love it. The call-in numbers are 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695 or 818-921-6929. You can follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. We're going to do two, three, four, five thousand tweets tonight. You guys are insane. Love each and every one of you. You can also email Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. And I'm going to go straight to the phones. Everything is blowing up here. But at the front of the line, as promised, one of my oldest friends on this planet, Bruce Pfeiffer. Bruce, live from Indianapolis, man. How are you? Yeah, doing great, Jimmy. How are you doing? Hey, Bruce. We've yeah. known each other for 40 years. Um, would you have ever thought that uh, you would be on my radio show in 2018? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. Exactly. No, I wouldn't. That's, it's, I, it, thought I, I thought I'd see you on MTV uh, well, playing rock and roll music. <laughs> well, that was, that, was the, that was the original idea, wasn't it? Well, you were, quite the, yeah. you were quite the guitar player back in the day. You're still playing, too, right? I do still play. I used did, I used to kind of give you lessons, didn't I? Yeah, uh, you did. That's actually where I kind of picked it up. Yeah, now that I yeah, that's right, that's right. We used to yeah yeah. Uh, Bruce and I, everybody uh, went to high school together, grew up in the same neighborhood, and uh, and we eventually after high school became roommates. We had a a party house that uh, what did we call that place? The Animal House. And the animal house. Man, <laughs> it was too, man. It was the revolving door of people. Oh, man. We tried to burn that thing down a few times. But anyway, <laughs> almost successful too. Almost successful. But uh, so Bruce almost. and I, yeah, Bruce and I grew up uh, together and, and uh, we're very, very, very close. And to this day, uh, we have, uh, there's probably the same circle of five, six, seven, eight guys, a couple of girls. Um, that were friends then, we're all still friends today, and and it's great to hear your voice, my friend. It's just it's so 
So cool to have you on the show uh, to say hello to everybody. Say hello, Fader Knots. Hello, Fader Knots. That's what I'm talking about, Bruce hey, Fiverr. <laughs> I, I thought I'd have a little fun if any of your fans were friends on your Facebook. I just recently um, posted a picture of us. Oh, you <laughs> hey, did? I think you know which one it is. Oh, oh, there it is. That's the classic picture. Okay, you know what? I am going to, uh, as you're telling the story... Um, I am going to, uh, I'll post this picture up so everybody can and see us. Now, this picture, yeah, you see, yeah, 1986, that's about right. So that's, man, that's 32 years ago, man. That's nuts. I, I don't know where the time went. Okay, so, Bruce, I'm gonna, going to let you uh, tell the story. Um, I'll set it up a little bit for the audience. Bruce and I were talking last week, and he said, Jimmy, I got to tell you the story about me and my UFO sighting when I was eight years old. And and then we ended up talking on the phone, and I stopped Bruce. I was like, Bruce, you've got to come on the show and tell the story. I don't want to hear any more about it. So, Bruce, set it up. This is on the east side of Indianapolis, um, next to the uh, Indiana State Police Station. Um, and that was on 16th Street, right? Or, or uh, 21st, 21st Street. 21st Street, around 21st and Franklin. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it was Braeburn, Braeburn Village Townhomes. Yes, go ahead. And, uh, yeah, so we um, uh, moved in there uh, temporarily, but my parents sold the house, and we're building a new house out by the Heather Hills Country Club. So, uh, oh, 1972, eight years old. Uh, it was in the summer. The only reason I remember that was because uh, that night, my mom telling me uh, it was time to go to bed that I had a, a baseball game the next day. So I uh, went upstairs. It was a, a two-story uh, townhouse and went upstairs to the bedroom, got my baseball uniform together and got in bed and, and we had bunk beds in there. And the bunk beds were up against the window, and my bed was the top bunk. So got my uniform together, turned the lights off, climbed in bed, uh, laid the pillow kind of on the wooden headboard, laid my arms on it, and was just looking out the window. When I, I, It was maybe just a few minutes, and I saw something off to the left, which would be to the south. And something just caught my eye, and it was some flashing light. So I'm looking at it thinking <clears throat> it was an airplane, maybe a helicopter. I wasn't sure. But as it got closer, I could definitely tell it wasn't an airplane. And it had uh, square flashing lights going around it. So I'm, I'm watching this. I'm just locked onto it because I'm, I'm not sure what it is. And as it's getting closer, I can tell it's it's black and it's round with the flashing lights and it's coming down. Now, the window that I'm looking out of is I'm looking into a courtyard. So I've got a building to the left and a building across from me in the courtyard was um, like a... There was a tennis court, basketball court, basketball court, and then there was like a little shelter house that had some picnic tables underneath it. I remember that. Yep. But as I'm looking out the window, so I'm I'm looking out to the west, and to the right of me is the highway. Because if you remember, the the apartments were built right by the I seventy. I seventy, and which uh, had Franklin uh, Road that went over it like an overpass, like a bridge, down to a little. When it came down to Twenty First Street, there was a strip mall on that corner, and then behind that, the the liquor store. What was it called? Uh, 21st Amendment. 21st Amendment liquor store. Yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, that's like, right. I don't, I don't know how I remember I that. I don't know how I remember <laughs> that either. And then behind that is this apartment complex that we're talking about that another friend of ours in our circle, uh, Walt Justice, his family, they owned that apartment complex. 
And then, and right. so there you go. So you, you're in between 21st Street and the freeway. The apartment complex is there. Okay, so you're looking out the window towards, and, and especially back then, it probably wasn't a suburban. There's probably more trees and more open uh, there. But the freeway, the overpass, the tennis courts, the basketball courts, and you are looking towards the lights of the freeway, like up towards the bridge, Right. Yes, so I'm I'm looking. I can actually see the bridge from my bedroom window. Right now, to so that so the highway would be to the right of me, and there wasn't a building there. So there was the little road for the the uh, complex, and then there was some a grass strip, a fence, and then the highway, just to my right as I'm looking out the window. So, anyways, I uh, I see this um, craft coming down. And I am just locked onto it now because I can see square flashing lights going around it. <laughs> and and the and the one thing that really amazed me, you know, is is just how vivid my memory it is of it. You know, I think as we grow older, we 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 tend to fade, you know, some of our childhood memories. But this is as vivid to me today, forty seven years later, as it was the night that I saw it. So uh, the the one thing about it that really stood out was how black it was. So this is coming out of the night sky, but it is blacker than the night sky. And so I, I, I see it coming down, and it comes right down into the courtyard. And and I am just amazed. I, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. So as it as it goes by me, it's going fairly slow. It's, I am pretty much at eye level with it at this point. Holy crap. When it's in front. Yeah. So it came down, really, right down into the courtyard. And it's it's black on the top. Um, the bottom of it was flat. The top of it, the, the only way I can describe the, the way the top of it looked would be like a symbol on a drum set. So oh. you know how a symbol is shaped? Yep, yep, with that little dome in the middle. Yep. And and then the flashing lights going around the outer edge of it. Now that and, and I would guesstimate the size of these lights were probably eight by eight, maybe ten by ten. So so pretty large. And they were multicolored lights. So there was red green, blue, orange, white. And and the thing and, and they were rotating around. So they weren't really like strobe lights. They were more they would it was just I kind of explain it like a lighthouse. How a light goes around inside of a lighthouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. And but even faster. Faster than a lighthouse. But uh, and they were and there were different colors, multicolors. So, but each time it came around, you know, if one of the, the squares had lit up red, the next time it came around, it would light up a different color. So they changed colors. Wow. Um. How how anyway, big? So, well, I, you know, I know you were eight years old, but uh, you know, you're eight. So, and I know how your mind works. You know, you like cars, you like things. You're you're, you're mechanically inclined. You've always, you know, been like that. So you know, it's not a helicopter or an airplane or the Goodyear blimp, whatever, right? But you're you've also all right. We had we had an airplane growing up, so I knew it wasn't an airplane. Right, right, right. Well, we didn't tell that part about your dad. Your dad was about half nuts, crazy cool. You know, built a cave house and and all of that stuff. So but we don't. We, don't <laughs> yeah, have we, a, we had we had an airplane growing up. My dad and I flew all the time on that's the right. That's right. And so you know, and that, I, I knew it wasn't an airplane. Right. I knew it wasn't a helicopter. I, I just didn't know what it was. Right, right. Um, the but I was uh, amazed by it. Were you able to like gauge a size? So the uh, the sides of it, um, I would guess you know maybe eight to ten feet high, just because I'm I'm remembering what the the size of the square lights. Right. 
So I'm saying those square lights were probably eight by eight, maybe 10 by 10. But the size of it was much larger than the tennis courts. Because as it was passing over the tennis courts, which were right outside of my window, right, it was it was much larger than the tennis courts. So I would I would probably guesstimate um, maybe forty feet across. Right, right. So any not, any not sound super big, but it was fairly large. No, that's big, man. That's, I mean, that's big. Um, did it make any noise? It made no noise at all. And now I didn't have, so I didn't, have, so the bedroom window wasn't open. So if it made any noise, I couldn't hear it because of that. Mm. But I was, I, my face was right at the window. Right. So there was no noise. There was no engine noise like an airplane or a helicopter. It came down with was, uh, checking out Brayburn yeah. Village, man. You know, and so that, that just flips me out. So uh, I, I don't want to uh, get to the end here. I don't want to say what happened next, but uh, because I want to, were there any windows? Did you see, I know you've described it as black and the square, you know, when the light's coming around and it's lighting in from the inside out and the lights are changing colors. Was there anything else about it that that you can think of? Were there windows? Were there ports? Did you see anybody? Did anybody wave at you? You know, what 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 did you see? No windows, no ports. It was completely smooth in every way, shape, and form, and what? even the way that it moved. Uh, everything about it was smooth. Didn't shake. Now, the one thing that uh, the one thing that I did see. Uh, two two things that are uh, kind of fascinating about it still to me um, was, well, so when I'm looking straight across at it, I did see one piece that came up off of the back of it. And I, I, I want to say it looked almost like an antenna. It was also black, but it had a white light on the end of it. And I would probably say maybe the size of a basketball. Wow. But it didn't flash or anything. It was just a solid white light. And I think the only reason I saw it at that point was because the building across from me, you know, gave me a, some definition of what it looked like. So overall. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I had a building in the background. So I could see the shape of it very clear. Now, the overall shape of this, was it round? Was it square? I know you've described the dome on the top, but overall, what kind of shape are we describing? It was round. Okay. And it was flat, completely flat on the bottom, but on the top was domed. Right. Just in the center. Um, there was no edges to it. So as it as it came down to the sides, it rounded, it curved as the, when it came off of the top down to the sides, man, to where the lights were at. That's a class A sighting right there, man. That's a class now, the, the A interesting sighting. Interesting thing. The interesting thing and fascinating thing to me about the lights um, were a couple things. So, uh, like I said, as the as the lights rotated around it, when the light would flash. And then it would go off. I could see the side of the craft. It was also completely black. Hmm. So to me, the lights weren't on the outside of it. Because it was the same color as the top of it. And then the other interesting fact of it is, as I'm watching it and I'm seeing these lights going around, there was no reflections. There was no reflections off of the building, the building behind it which would be the building straight across from me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there was no, no reflection of lights off of those buildings. Now, at that time... So to me, it looked like the light was internal inside of it. Right, that's what I'm picturing here. That's, that's exactly what I was imagining. Um, I used to work uh, there at this complex, everybody, that uh, Bruce is talking about right after high school. Or maybe I was still in high school. No, it was after. I worked at McDonald's during high school. 
So, uh, do you remember when I worked at the McDonald's <laughs> at Washington Square? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, anyway. Tree Plaza. Yeah, man. Um, uh, so, um, but I used to work at this apartment complex uh, that Bruce is talking about here. Was it was it finished? Because when I worked there, it was pretty ginormous. It was, it was really big. Um, w- was it completed back then? No, I think back then... It was only the townhouses. It was I only think, oh, uh, that, later on they built the apartments, which would be just a little on the west side of the townhouses. on the west side, yeah, closer to uh, the Twenty First Amendment. So the right, uh, and also there wasn't a building to my right. I could see the highway. The highway was right there. And right, I look out my window to the right. Right, but there is right. A, there's a building there now. Right, there is. The um, the reason why I'm asking is because there are it's a it's a this is a big apartment complex. This is like the no joke. Like there's probably I don't know a few hundred or more families that live there. I mean it's big. It's it's I don't know how many per building or how many buildings. But was there anybody else walking around? That's what I'm getting at. Uh, it, did did anybody else see this? Uh, yes. Who saw it? So now there, there was nobody walking around in the courtyard. Right. So like I said, as this, as it was passing by and, you know, I, I watched it descend out of the sky, come right down into the courtyard and it was moving very slow past me. So I got a really good look at it. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, from my window to the, the craft itself, I was probably no more than. 25 or 30 yards from it. Mm-hmm. And so as it passed over the, the tennis courts and continued on to the north, which would be towards the highway, right? as it started to get towards the highway and it started to climb up, there was a semi that stopped Ooh. right there on the highway. And I watched the driver jump out of the truck and run around to the front of the truck and look up at it as it was passing over. So this thing is just starting to climb just over the highway. And I watched the semi stop. I, I can see the guy jump out, run around to the front of the semi, and he's standing in the lights of a semi looking up at it. And he stood there and watched it the whole time I stood there and watched it <clears throat> as it was going off into the distance. <clears throat> and it was still climbing. Another interesting fact about that was it never tilted, ever. When it was descending, coming from my left, it was completely level. It just dropped down. Now, you know, my my dad having an airplane and us flying all the time, I know that, you know, when the airplane is climbing, we tilt the nose up. Right. To make it climb. This This was climbing but it stayed perfectly level the entire time as it came down, as it moved across, as it moved across the highway and as it went up. So it was going up, but it stayed completely level the entire time. It didn't tilt to go up. It stayed completely level. So I see the guy in the semi and I'm watching him. He's looking up at it as it's passing over him. And he watched it and and I, I remember as clear as today him standing there as it's going off in the distance with his hands on his hips <laughs> looking at it because he, he's standing in front of a semi in the lights. Man, And if... then there was also one other car that I saw pull over in front of the semi, but nobody ever got out of it, so they were looking at it too. And then there was a few other cars I saw going by really slow. So I know they were looking at it too, but they didn't stop. Yeah, and this intersection. But I never saw anybody get out of the car. Yeah, this intersection, Twenty First and Franklin. You know, it's a uh, even back then uh, busy intersection. You know, and this is uh, the the hardcore east side of Indianapolis, where the seventy and like the four sixty five cross, and this is uh, you know suburbia. You know, it it back. Yeah, then, I mean, not much further, not much further east of us was. Cornfields. <laughs> so we were, yeah. <laughs> but we were almost about as far, well, 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 where we were building our house, 
there by the country club. Once you pass the country club, it was all country. All cornfields. All cornfields back yep. then. Um, Bruce, I, I want to thank you uh, for, well, first off, for being a friend for all of these years. But, for you know, for coming forward with this, this is a, a Class A remarkable sighting. And you never know whoever was in that semi-truck. So you were eight. So this is 1970, 1970, Two. 71, 72. Yeah. Right in there. So if if you're out there and and you're listening, or you know somebody that was that semi driver, uh, semi truck driver that told you a story about seeing a UFO in 1972 on the east side of Indianapolis, I want to hear from you. You know how to get a hold of the show, and you've got my email, Bruce, right here. So you posted the picture, right, and I put it up in Twitter. And check out this comment. I thought it'd be fun for your fans oh, to see what you look like oh, in 1986. Yeah, check this out. Somebody just said, looks like Eddie Van Halen and Jeff Gordon walked into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be. Oh, that's hilarious. That is spot on the money. They just posted a picture of Jeff Gordon. I swear, this picture of Jeff Gordon, that is you, Bruce. That, that's, he, that's funny because when Jeff, when Jeff Gordon you know, became popular, it would happen to me two or three times a week. I know random people that I don't even know would come up and be like, Hey, you know who you look like? And I'm like, let me guess Jeff Gordon. <laughs> They're like, Oh my God, you're his twin. <laughs> oh man. This is just too funny. Uh, you always reminded me of, no, Jeff Gordon reminded me of you. You were first. So it, it kind of, uh, it goes in the opposite direction. Thank you so much, Bruce. How's the family? How's everybody? Uh, they Hey, they're doing great. Are, are you? They're all growing, uh, yeah. doing their own thing, uh, doing really well in life. And uh, are you, so. you and uh, uh, Michelle? Are you guys living alone? Are you empty nesters now? It's Julie. Julie. Who? Michelle. Yeah. Oh Michelle. Kurt. And Michelle. <laughs> Kurt. <and> Michelle. <laughs> oh man, Kurt. And Mich- uh, yeah, everybody has to understand. We have a small group. We have, uh, we all have our wives, and it is very easy uh, for me to do what I just did. But anyway, so Julie, mm-hmm. um, are you guys empty nesters? We are. So, wow, we are empty nesters, and uh, actually, this year, June, June this year, we celebrated our thirtieth anniversary. I man, and I remember uh, going back to like I think she took the picture that you posted. She did. I think she did, didn't she? <laughs> Oh, I think did. That's right. Yeah, that was actually uh, when her and I, uh, we were actually still dating at that that's time. That's right. That was before you were married. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Before yep. we were engaged. And it was a, a little house that we rented there. Little house, and we stayed up, stayed up all night and played guitar in the basement. Yep, had a basement, had the guitars down there. Yep, I remember. Um, I, I do remember I that. Think that was, I think that was maybe after we... The four of us went out and got a little stupid. No, well, it was, but <laughs> then, but, stupid. <laughs> but then we we came back, we played guitar, and then when the sun came up, I'm letting everybody know we stayed up all night. Um, I hadn't been back to Indianapolis in a couple of years. I was out here in L.A. But then, as soon as the sun came up, we all went down to Waffle House on Washington Street, yes. the famous the famous wa- uh, Washington Street Waffle House that we we ate at in high school. And we went back and we had breakfast at uh, seven a.m. Uh, it was uh, yeah. It was a lot a great of times movie. we go after a uh, concert at Market Square Arena. That's right. <laughs> uh, we, we'd either hit the the Waffle House or the White Castle. Man, <laughs> along with everybody else from the concert. I I miss those days, Bruce. Thank you so much, and it was uh, it was great to have you on after all these years and and to share this experience and and uh, it it just means a lot to me uh, personally. Thank you yeah, so you much. Know, I've Bruce. only I've only uh, really shared it with my family and a small handful of people ever. I know. That's how it goes. Um, well, you know, I just think it's, uh, you know, with, with other people, it's maybe somebody else that's had an experience that talked about it, uh, which opened me up and let me tell my story. Oh, that's what happens with this radio show, Bruce. People come on here. They've never talked about anything They've they've kept it to themselves, and then they come on the show, and it, 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 it's all out. That's it, Bruce. You're out of the closet. Yeah. Give my best to yeah, Julie. You know, uh, um, hey, Bruce. Bruce. Yeah. I have to hit a commercial right now. Okay. So do me a favor. Get it. Say thank you to Julie for letting you come on this show. Will you do that for me? 
I'll do that, Jimmy. <laughs> I'll talk to you, Bruce. Behave <laughs> and be well, my friend. I know you got to get up here in a few few hours and go to work. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. Have a good one. Bruce Pfeiffer, live from Indianapolis. Thank you, Bruce. Unbelievable. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Bruce Pfeiffer. All right, let's kick off this fader night. I'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Folks, this is very important information. What's to be said about CBD? AncientLifeOil.com. Our CBD is made from hemp and has 0.003 THC, which means this wonderful product won't get you high. No matter what amount you take, what does CBD do for the body? My hands are tied. But you can Google CBD benefits and be astounded. When you're finished reading, you'll want to log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com and purchase. Life is good when you feel good. People are tired of pain. People are asking for non-GMO organic products to help them with... (laughs) You fill in the blank. Legal in 49 states, and again, our CBD is made from hemp. Ancient Life Oil is about helping people one by one by one. If you wonder how good the product is, the CEO takes it every day without miss. AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com. Have a great day. Hi, this is Ray Sobbs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. Well, the <laughs> just... We are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. Reclaim your active lifestyle with Angioprim. Angioprim is the original liquid oral chelation supplement. Chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in your veins and arteries that can cause blockages. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in Angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. Find out more. Go to angioprim.com. Talk to a trained consultant by calling Angioprim toll-free, 877-882-7221. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hey, it's Grace. Can we talk about something serious for a minute? Your age. Getting old has its perks. But remember, being a few years younger, you know, your hair was thicker, you didn't have so many wrinkles, that extra weight wasn't haunting you, and you just felt better. Well, we can't turn back the clocks and go back 10 or 15 years, but you can start feeling and looking 10 or 15 years younger with Nature's Youth RSF. It's a doctor-formulated daily supplement that helps your body maintain its peak performance and fight the aging process. Imagine sleeping better, looking better, and feeling better. See how Nature's Youth RSF has helped thousands of people just like you at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. Imagine how it will feel when your family and friends are asking you what you did to look so good. Your secret will be Nature's Youth RSF. It's time to start looking better and feeling better. Learn more and order your Nature's Youth RSF at naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the lucky pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black, across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. All 
right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. It's Fader Night, Thursday night. Open lines all night long. The call-in numbers are 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695 or 818-921-6929. Bruce Pfeiffer. That's pretty cool, isn't it? When you have a, a, a life... Uh, where you have friendships, you know, for 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 so many years that, that go back that far, that life just takes you in in places, and 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 same thing with with Bruce and his family, and and uh, you know his kids are now all grown. We've all gone through that now. Kids are grown up, mine, his, uh, and so forth. But that it took us to this place so many years later, and I can promise you. And that house that we had on the hill <laughs> where we would sit and play guitar in the middle of the summer and 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 just talk and, 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 you know, have dreams and do all these things that, you know, at that age, I wasn't even drinking age. You know, we I, when we had that house, I think Bruce and I were both uh, 20, 20 years old, 19, you know, 20. Wow, man, I was working at Bell Laboratories. That was just a crazy things. And where, you know, how the craziest thoughts that we could have had, but the last one would be that I would be doing a radio show and he would be calling in uh, 30 years later to talk about a UFO signing. How cool is that? Life is wonderful. All right, let's go to the phones. Uh, let's see. Let's go to area code four, two, five. You're up first on this fader night. Who's calling? Oh, Jimmy. How you doing inquire? Hey, was that, is I'm that, was doing... that, was that your Les Paul? Who, who, who posted the Les Paul picture earlier? Uh, I'm not sure that wasn't me though. Okay. okay. I got to go back. Oh no, it wasn't you. It was Gene. It was Gene. Okay. Ah. How you doing, man? What's cracking? Man, I'm doing good, and I think the first thing I wanted to ask you, with all this madness going on, I just want to know, what was your highlight of this week? What made you the happiest this week? Uh, uh, what made me the happiest this week? I, I, I just told you in the opening remarks, man, a bag of coconut oh, clusters. Oh, that, that bag? Man, oh, that, that was the, the supreme highlight of it all. Yeah, man. You know, uh, to, to, to okay. Well, hey, hey, hey. There are little joys in life, right? But to find man, out, I'm not judging. Yeah, I know, I know. To find out, uh, you know, you're eating something that you're not supposed to like, right? It's gluten free vegan coconut clusters, right? How disgusting is that? And they were delicious. And then to find out the secret to the deliciousness was pure cane sugar. So, of course, I was happy. So, of course, I was uplifted. So, of course, I was thinking clearly. So, of course, it put me in a good mood. Was, I'm getting jacked up on pure cane sugar like the rest of those vegans yeah. running around. So, there you go. You're getting me jacked up on that, man. <laughs> I mean, oh, I'm happy to... But that was the supreme highlight of it all. That That's a very nice thing, the little thing. Yeah, absolutely. So well, what about you? What was the highlight? Oh, I have to say, well, yesterday, I, well, tomorrow's my daughter's fifth birthday. So yesterday I got to have my birthday party thing with her. So that can't beat that. No, you can't. With all the kids and stuff. That, that was a good time. That was a good separation from this social media madness. Yeah, you got to speak. <laughs> you got to speak up, inquire. I can barely hear you. Oh, okay. But, but yeah, Saint, the, her birthday party definitely the highlight. She uh, is five. Yeah, I can. And you know, five okay. years old. And you go back um, when I think about it, and I know that every year is precious, and that everything has got its own little highlight and unique thing that you know is there about it. But there is something about that age, three, four, five, six years old. That's right in the pocket, man. Where uh, you're still the genius, right? You, you've got all the answers. You get to answer all the questions. You know, you get to start guiding them on their and and it's just man, a birthday cake and a five year old and a birthday party. It don't get no better, man. It don't. Christmas nope. at that age, uh, all the holiday man, just uh, Halloween 
with a five-year-old. It don't get no better, man. It just doesn't. I miss those days, man. I really do. I miss them. I miss them completely. I'm all jacked up on that. Halloween's coming. <laughs> yeah, next week. Then, well, I guess speaking of Halloween, the next quick thing I was going to bring up is in all your years in the rock and roll world, do you have any good Marilyn Manson stories? <laughs> nothing that I could do on the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, nothing <laughs> that I could do on the air. Um, I, I'm just going to leave that go. Just gonna leave that go. I yeah, got, I got. Uh, I got to let that one. Fair enough. I got to let that one just slip on by. I'll let you share one if you've got one. I've got one. This was. Uh, I was trying to think of what year this was. It was about four or five years ago. I was backstage when he came through Seattle, hanging out, and he was getting over the flu, and so you know he's hanging out and all that and there's this photographer there that wouldn't get out of his face just kept taking pictures and manson seemed like he wasn't too happy about that so he blew some snot in his hand and threw it at the camera lens and uh that photographer wasn't wasn't very happy about that but not much you're going to do to Marilyn Manson. That's a big guy. Yeah, well, there, and that would end uh, that would end uh, the photography too, as well. Pretty effective. Pretty effective. Yep, yep, that worked out pretty good. Yeah, pretty effective. I'm glad you witnessed that. That tops my story, yeah. anyway. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All Did right. you hear his newest album? I haven't heard it yet. I know it's out. Um, I've Man. been hearing. You know what? You know what? I'm really going to bum you out. Because I'm oh, bummed no. out about this. No, check this out. Uh, today is Thursday. Yesterday, or was it the day? Or was it Tuesday? I got a phone call from Kurt James, and uh, he goes, "Dude, we're rehearsing today. Come on down." And you know, and and I'm just like, ah, ah, and I was just, I said, "How long? We're going to rehearse until uh, two p.m." Right here in Burbank, too. Right here. And I couldn't go. And and I think about that. Graham Bonnet, the band, right there. Boom. Rehearsal studio. And, I and you know, a mile away. And I, I couldn't go. I couldn't go. I couldn't oh. Go. <laughs> I'm just, well, I'm, you know, that's pretty awesome that you get those opportunities thrown out to you, especially with good old Peter Togtrin. Well, Woo. yeah, I know, I know, I know. See, the um, uh, he, uh, you're you're right about that, and I'm I'm, I'm thankful, so thankful that uh, people uh, are opening up now, and that includes the musicians and the entertainment in- industry and the actors, and and, and so some of the uh, uh, heroes of people outside of our circle, right? When they, you know, Peter. And and Graham and and uh, you know Sammy Hagar they have huge followings and when they start talking about UFOs and they're talking about ETs and and disclosure that their fans that are not part of this circle are exposed to it so hopefully they'll turn around and you know and search these keywords turn around and find fade to black or find coast to coast or a cool website and start to get pulled into our circle and and start to uh, get exposed to the knowledge that wouldn't have happened if some of these uh uh different celebrities uh didn't say anything about it and i'm very thankful for that they they feel that it's safe and okay you're not going to get teased you know, it's okay to talk about it. Like you, you're another one. You've got a huge sphere of influence, you know, and, and I, I'm th- very thankful for that. Very, very thankful. You got to use it for something other than all the crap the mainstream is flooding our kids with. <laughs> well, Acquire, enjoy the rest of your weekend, uh, and I know that we are too. And uh, let's speak soon, my friend. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, where can everybody go listen to your stuff? Oh, how about, where do I have it all? Oh, well, just go to inquirewithinshop.com, and then there's some links that'll take you to all the music. 
I'm in the, I got to rework some of my website presence to have the music easier to stream or Spotify. Just add me on Spotify or any digital music thing. It's everywhere. There's your answer. There you go. Thank you so much, Inquire. <laughs> Inquire Within. Thank you so much, man. Behave and have a great weekend. You too, man. Thank you so much. And uh, and and he brings up a great point when we're talking about like Peter Takrin, it it's uh, you know or Sammy Hagar, or, you know Graham Bonnet. We've had uh, Jennifer Batten, uh, the guitar player, uh, was on this show talking about her UFO stuff and. Uh, I can go on and on and on. Uh, of course, Doug Aldrich uh, was on this show. And um, I'm just trying to think. I'm just drawing blanks on all of the musicians that we've had here. Um, great ones, right? Now, we Dizzy Reed, Guns N' Roses. When you have um, uh, them come on this show, because I never thought that I would be able to, like, tie that music a musical past of mine into this i always thought i'd talk about music but the, you know as soon as they find out that i'm doing ufos now or i'm doing conspiracy or ghosts they've all got a story you know jennifer batten one of the great guitar players on this planet michael jackson jeff beck on and on right and to have her go, man, I go to all the conferences, right? <laughs> you what? Think about that. All right, let's go to, oh, let's go to the other phone bank. Who's up first here? Uh, area code five four zero. You're up next on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. Hi. Who's this? This is uh, Paul from Orange, Virginia. Paul from Orange, Virginia. Where is Orange, Virginia, Paul? Um. It's about an hour south of Washington, D.C. Hour south of Washington, D.C.? Okay, I got you. Yeah. So what's on your mind tonight, Paul? Right in between Washington and Richmond, kind of. Gotcha, gotcha. What's on your mind? Um. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, you're breaking up. I'm listening to you. I just, someone else just came on the line. Oh, uh, there shouldn't be anybody there. It's okay, Paul. Go ahead. No, they just said something like, this is Ron from Orange County uh, calling to say something. and uh, then... uh, Paul, it, we have a huge phone system here, and everybody can okay. listen to everybody else. Nobody can hear him, but he's got to be able to hear you, right, and the radio show. He did. He just said, okay, I don't know how I got in here, but I, I, now I'm going to hang up. Oh, okay, Paul, can you continue, <laughs> please? <laughs> okay. He, that's weird because he said he's from Orange. Maybe it's in California. Oh, okay. But, okay, um... All right, I guess I'll tell this story of what happened to me last fall. Um, I was out back, sitting on the patio, having a cigarette, having some drinks, talking to my friend, and uh, talking to my friend on the telephone. And um, it was about 10 at night, and it was dark. And there's a, the yard goes back really steep down to the lake here, and um, it's a lot of woods and stuff in between, brush, and it's pretty thick. Well, suddenly I heard something running across the uh, the yard there, right through all the thick brush, I, you know. And I'm, I was like, what was that? And my friend was like, what? And I said, I don't know. Something just ran through the yard. It was big, whatever it was. And um, I, to me, I couldn't figure why did it run where it ran, because it could have been just a little further down by the lake and had a free, you know, it was all open down there. But I, th I said, uh, maybe it was a deer, I guess, but <clears throat> I've never seen a deer here <clears throat> in this spot before, and it seemed like a, a weird time for it to be running. Um, anyway, I, I kind of forgot about it, and I kept talking to my friend, and suddenly I hear I hear a noise down by the, by the dock, and... Um, I was like, there, there it is again. And for some reason, my first thought was, it was some kids playing around down there. I don't know why. I don't know why I thought that, but that was just the first thing I thought. Anyway, I got up, and I went running over towards the stairs that go down to the dock. And uh, there were brick stairs. And when I got to the stairs, I'm standing, I, I get to the top of them, and I look down them, 
and there's this thing running up the stairs towards me. And I was just in shock, kind of. What do you mean? What was it? What did you see? Yeah, it was a, uh, it was like, basically, it was a person, but it had a deer head. It was a, <laughs> a human body with a, with a deer head. Yes. And it was running up the stairs so fast, it was crazy that it could even move that fast. And it was staring right at me. And I'm just standing there, and I'm staring at it. And uh, it had red eyes. It actually had red eyes. One friend said it means it was demonic. And I said, no, I don't think it was demonic or anything. But anyway, it just it ran right up to me. And it stared, kept staring me in the eyes, and I was staring right back at its eyes, just kind of in shock, I guess. And uh, when it got... When it got right up to me, it actually said something, which I don't know what it said. I just remember, I just know it It said something like four or five syllables real fast. Rah, 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 something like that. Okay, all right, all right. I, all right. No, I, it seemed like it said words, but I, I don't know what they were if it did. And then it ran right, and then it just ran, kept running and ran right by me. It was... I could have, I could have touched it. It probably, it was within inches of me because stair, the stairway is only four feet across. Could it have been? Now I'm gonna add, let me be the uh, devil's advocate guy for a second. Could it have been sure. somebody wearing a deer head? That's what people said too. That a couple friends that I told, I hadn't hardly told anybody about this because it's just the craziest thing I ever, I ever saw, and. uh um, that's what someone suggested, and I said, no, no, it, it was moving way too fast. It was. Wow. It was just, it was, it was, it, mo it was moving so fast, when I th thought about it later, I was like, man, almost like, it was like, in a different type of dimension or something. Wow. And, that's only, cause what do you think it was? I think it was, I think it was a, a being that's got a human body and a deer head. And and the antlers weren't like the deer around here. They weren't like the white-tailed deer here. They were more spindly. They were spindly, and uh, there was more, a lot more like tines or branches than normal, than, than they have around here. I actually saw a branch once, and I was like, oh, my God, that branch looks like one of the antlers on that thing I saw. That's uh, that's pretty crazy, man. It was, man. Like I said, I don't even tell my friends about that. No, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, you see, there's certain things you're, you're cool with sharing, right? I saw a UFO. I saw mm -hmm. Bigfoot. I saw a ghost, right? Okay? Yeah. yeah the ghost of my cat came and sat on me while I was sleeping. You you can go there, right? Certain yeah. zone you can go into. The the deer headed human with the red eyes. That mm -hmm. that one's that one's that one's kinda tough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's and, uh, that's that's a crazy sighting. None of my friends that I know of probably listen to your show. So <laughs> you're the <laughs> but I, it, it it doesn't matter though, but uh, you never it's not, know. It's not something I go around telling people. You never know. Uh, somebody, out there, somebody out there right now is going, Paul, in Orange, Virginia, I know that guy. <laughs> 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 oh, man, that that's pretty amazing. And that's the only time it's happened. And uh, do you think, you know, oh. now what about, what about things like full moon? Did you provoke this? Was there something else external that caused this to happen? You know, was there anything else? Did you see a light in the sky? Was Could there have been some interdimensionality to it? Was there anything else? I can't think of anything else like that that could have triggered it or, you know, could have caused it. But uh, I did I did finally, uh, you know, like the next night I'm standing at the top of the, top of the stairs. It's nighttime, right? Right. And uh, dark. And I was like, I was, I was, I had goosebumps all over me, you know. And I was like, I was calling myself a, a I'll say wimp. 
Right. I said, Paul, are you a wimp? I said, you're going to walk down these stairs and go down to the dock. And I'm standing there looking down the stairs, and then I went, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm okay now with it. I, I went out and slept on the dock over the summer, and, man, if something did happen around 2.30 in the morning. I woke up, and uh, and I was laying there. I think I started looking at my phone and uh, until I went back to sleep. But about 50 feet away in the woods, I heard something big crashing around, and then... Uh, it, and then I heard it. It started snorting, like a deer snort. And I was like, "What the?" Yeah. <laughs> and I just laid there. I just laid there. I'm like, "Well, I'm not getting up. I'm not going up there the hill. I'm just gonna lay here and be quiet." And you know, <laughs> and I don't know what it was, but it sounded like a deer, and it was, and it was big. What What were the uh, legs like? Were they just, was it just uh, human from the neck down? Is that what you're? Yeah. I think it was human from the neck down, but to be honest with you, I didn't look down at its legs. What, what it about, so okay, fast. Paul. I, I was just staring at its face while it was coming at me, you know. Yeah, Paul, um, I've got to hit a break, and I want to thank you for this. So two quick questions. Sure. Clothes, shoes, clothes, jacket? No, I didn't notice any kind of clothes. So he was buck naked. Um, I can't say for sure, because like I said, I didn't look down. I mean, honestly, that that thing was locked its eyes on mine, and I was locked on its eyes, and right, and you know, and it was kind of dark too. You know, that's uh, it's going to cause some crazy dreams tonight to this audience. I really appreciate that, my, myself included. Nice. Thank you so much, Paul. Be safe and yeah, be well, me. man. Okay? Hey, you too. Thanks, Th- man. Take thank care. you so much. That's a great phone call right there. That's that. You know, we uh, we have a lot of uh, experiences and sightings and things that happen on this show, uh, and and we take these calls. That That's right up there. That's, uh, that is, I've, man, you know, I've been doing this show for a long time. I've been listening to shows like this for much longer than that. That was a good phone call. Thank you so much, Paul. Don't worry. Somebody's going to come up to you and go, I heard you last night on Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fader Night, Thursday night, open lines all night long. I'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzonel, tiburón. Y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo, Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All new mana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the new mana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the new mana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously. Go back, Lee Tappy. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. (laughs) KGRARadio.com If you have hard water, the lime scale not only leaves white spots, it clogs pipes and breaks down appliances, costing you hundreds of dollars in energy and wear. Eliminate lime scale and other water issues like brown staining and bad odors with HydroCare water products available from Wave Home Solutions. Wave's affordable water systems don't use salts or chemicals. You'll love the way your water tastes, smells, and looks. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Thursday night, Fader night. Best night of the week on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. The call-in numbers are 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695 or 818-921-6929. Great calls tonight. It's been amazing so far. Let's go to area code... Uh, nine seven two. You're up next on Faded Block. Who's calling? Jimmy, this is your rock and roll pal, Mark from Dallas. How's it going? Hey, Mark from Dallas, my rock and roll pal. How are you? Man, it's great. How's a couple questions? How's the weather in LA tonight? It's perfect. <laughs> it's shocking. Yeah, it's per- just like uh, it was last night and the night before. <laughs> and the night before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Second question. I'm going to do a. I'm going to do a Richard Dolan on you. What is uh, what music were you listening to today? Uh, today I did. Uh, I okay. Are you ready? Somebody posted this. I went through a Queen thing today, and somebody posted in Twitter. I was sitting here in the bunker working and typing and you know writing, and uh, somebody posted. Bohemian Rhapsody on uh, a carnival organ, right? So <laughs> I, I I watched that and and listened to it. It was it was incredible. And so and then I you know I went from that and then Rita posted up some stuff and and uh, Queen uh, under pressure. And so I ended up going through. And once you go into that zone, you kind of don't get out of it. So. Uh, that's what I did. I went into uh, I went to a queen. I went through Queen today. You know, man, the, the rock and roll of that era. You take Bohemian Rhapsody, for example. There's no music like that now. That was that is 
no others. That song was so great. That album, that whole, whole album. album. Oh man! In the year of what was that song? The year of forty nine. Oh man! Yeah. Right. Uh, a uh, bicycle, you know, uh, and yeah. you know, and, and, and that uh, you're my best friend, right? And you go and you listen to that album in its entirety. Um, I'm in love with my car, right? Roger Taylor sang that, the uh, the drummer. And so, yeah, you're right. You're right about that. There's, there's, and I was listening to the complexity. We all know it, right? But when you take the 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 words away. Uh, from Bohemian Rhapsody, and you're listening to an organ version of it that's layered and it's got all the parts in it, and you realize the melody and how that thing was put together, that is powerful stuff. That is real songwriting, real songwriting, you know, a real engineering, a real recording, real microphones, real drums, and, you know, it's... Uh, you know, real guitar, <laughs> real vocals. Well, you know, you, yeah, and you just mentioned engineering. I, just, I don't know who the production team was. You know, we've talked before about the greatness of uh, Yes, those old Yes albums, right. and Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and uh, now you just mentioned Queen. I think they fit in that same genre of just this tremendously produced masterpiece of an album. You just don't get those anymore, man. No, you don't. And uh, the the thing is, um, Roy Thomas Baker was the producer of that, and I got to meet him a few times. Uh, cool. Just, uh, I mean, way beyond uh, uh, talent, you know. And he had mm -hmm. he had a way of uh, envisioning things, and everything that he touched uh, had that magic to it, but. But to to come up with the layering and everything that had to happen for something like Bohemian Rhapsody, and back then, mm -hmm. you know, nineteen seventy seven, you know, if, if you think about mm -hmm. that, uh, mm -hmm. seventy seventy five, seventy six, seventy seven, seventy eight, where uh, recording techniques, it was all breaking down doors. You know how to compress, yeah. how to use delay, digital delay, and reverb and and layering you only had 24 tracks and 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 keyboards and and all of that stuff came into play and and Roy had a a vision of of getting uh getting this what was going on in his head what was going on in um Freddie Mercury's head and Roger Taylor and 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 Deacon you know those guys had a a grandiose thing that they were trying to you know get out of their heads and get mm -hmm. onto a recording you know, that's a whole mm, other thing. Yeah. You know, how do you get this out of yeah. your head and get it onto the and, and and Roy Thomas Baker pulled it off. There's no doubt about it. N none. Okay, so well, what's on your mind? Okay, man. Now you know that I love playing these uh, rock and roll games. Let's do one real quick. Okay. Now last last time I called, we broke out the uh, DeLorean and we went back in time to what I think is still the greatest uh, summer in rock history, 1973. Now. Right. Uh, so I got the DeLorean back out of the garage. Okay. So here's All right. what we're going to, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play the time machine game again, only this time with a caveat, we're going to concentrate on bass players. Okay. So, uh, I, I've been a, you know, you're talking about a queen mood. I've been in a bass playing. I've been listening to badass bass players all week. And so I thought I would throw you some, uh, some bass players, uh, competing against each other. Okay. So. All right. you ready to go? Yeah, man. All right, I got the okay. I got the DeLorean fired up, and the first night is March fourteenth, nineteen eighty five. Oh, There's two shows going going on at once. I probably okay. went to one of them. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you may have. So the first the first show is at the Kabuki Theater in San Francisco, California. Okay, hold on, Kabuki Theater. I'm going to preempt you. Was it okay. Stevie Ray Vaughan? Okay, so it's gonna be it's gonna be Metallica. Ah, now, Metallica at the Kabuki so, in nineteen eighty five. So okay, March fourteenth on the night of March fourteenth, nineteen eighty five, the first band and the first play, bass player we're going to talk about is Metallica. That was the great Cliff Burton before that, he died. That's right. Now, Cliff Burton was a true badass. He could play a bass like a lead guitar. Now, in 1985, incredible. 85 at the Kabuki, that is right before he died in Europe. 
he died in 86. That's so right. It was just a couple, few months. It was just a few months before he died. That's right. That's right. Now, he, now he competing against that greatness at the Lee Civic Center in Fort Myers, Florida, same night, March 14th, 1985, is a little band called Rush and Getty Lee. Right. Okay. Now, you pick which show you want to go see that night. That's Eddie a tough, Lee and Rush or Cliff Burton and Metallica? You know, you know that's an illegal question. That, that's not even sorry, fair. Tough, that's man. not even fair. It's not even, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's truly, it, it's unfair because there's not a, there's not a correct answer there. And you're exa- well, both answers are right. Yeah. Both, both answers, answers are right. Good. Both answers are right. And now, okay. So then let me, Let's DeLorean this a little bit, okay? Because okay. Right. because we know now that Cliff died right after that. Okay? Now, would that, if Cliff was alive today, would that change? Because that's an opportunity to mm-hmm. see Cliff Burton before he died and, you know, Getty Lee Thank still you. around, right? So that, that, that throws a little wrench in it. But if this was 1985 and I don't know the future... Right, a little right, Delorean right. caveat in it, and I had right. to make a choice that night in '85. I might go Rush, and uh, yeah. and and the reason why I would go Rush because in 1985, Rush is coming off of two, three, four albums back to back to back that were oh, yeah. seminal in rock and roll. Right, so strong, you, strong, 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 moving pictures. Right, think you know, and yeah. the strength oh, yeah. of what uh, Rush was. Rush mm-hmm. might have been in 1985 mm-hmm. at their peak. Getty okay. still, Getty still had his voice. Neil was yep. playing like a right, oh. and, oh, and, and, and yeah, yeah. So if you think about that, Rush was at their peak, and that that's probably where I would go. Um, at that well, in 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 eighty five, in eighty five, yeah. you know, Rush is a different thing today. I don't know if I would go see Rush today. Well, I might, you know, because of emotions. But um, but now, now knowing that Cliff died in in the in the accident in Europe a couple of months later, uh, I don't have I don't have Cliff today. You know, so right. do do with that knowledge, I I think I would go see Metallica at the Kabuki. You know, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. So uh, we'll call that one a draw. But um, I think, like you just said, I believe I would have to go see Cliff Burton. Knowing what I know now, I would love to go back and see him tear it up when right. he was at his at his peak, man. He, but, uh, he okay. was he was amazing, man. Just amazing, and you and and just go back and you listen. The thing was oh, ab- about yeah. Cliff. And I've got a lot of friends, man, that knew him. I never got a chance to meet him. Uh, strangely enough, I never did. But I have a lot of friends well, that he said he was, well, there was that, but he was the coolest, funniest, amazing human being to be around, you know, and just oh, love really? life. And cool. he was, and in, at that age, he was a kid. Oh, no. A kid. A kid. And was innovating, breaking down doors yeah. like everybody did at that age, where you had Eddie Van Halen or Absolutely. Randy Rhodes. You know these these cats that were running around breaking mm-hmm. down doors, yeah. right? Well, it was a golden age, man. And yeah. he he was one it was of a them. Golden age, Mark. Thank All you right, for dude, that. We man. got okay. Oh. All right, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was amazing. You got to do this right, every third. We got to do this every Thursday night. <laughs> Well, I've got, I've got, I've got many more of these. So uh, you don't mind if I call in and do this occasionally, do you? I do not. Do you have a T-shirt? <laughs> no, sir, I do not. Okay, write Rita right now. Send her an email, and I'll get you a T-shirt in the mail. All right, thanks, brother. You have a good night. Thank you, Mark. That's what I'm talking about. Right there. Let's go to area code. <laughs> that was a great phone call. Area code nine seven one. You're up next on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Jimmy, it's Roger. Roger. Roger who? Roger, Roger Taylor. Richard. Roger Taylor from Queen. We were just talking about you. <laughs> I wish that was me. Roger Richards calling in to fade to black. All right. I'm, yes, I'm taking off. my first time, dude. I, I'm taking off guard here. Okay. How are you, Roger? Well, I, I can imagine I know where how you're doing right now, but 
How you doing, Roger? I'm doing good. I'm good. I'm just hanging out with my wife, decompressing from the long day and listening to your fine, suave voice. Mm. <sighs> I had to take a hit of coffee. Okay, there you go. What's on your mind, man? You know, it's it's funny. I was sitting here just kind of with my wife, and one of the things that uh, you know we talk about a lot is. Um, her history in India and a lot of the stuff, the ufology stuff that kind of comes up there in the, um, you know, kind of unacknowledged villages that are, you know, undocumented people. And she grew up there and uh, had some really, really interesting experiences happen while out there. And it's funny because in the the movie I've been working on with David, he goes into, you know, the the history of the Vimana and, and things like that in the Mahabharata. And I just noticed that it's not something that's talked a lot about, but I know that um, India has like a huge following for ancient aliens. And I'm just wondering if you got any other information or if you want to talk about anything like that, that you've come across over the years. And you're uh, kind of like the archive of, you know, yeah. historical ufology. It's funny that um, uh, you bring that up. If there is a zone uh, you know, in, in ufology, right? Uh, if there is a zone where I'm weakest, right? It's, it's India, but, but let me finish. This is what's crazy. It's also an endless well of information, right? It, it goes back exactly. tens of thousands of years. There's so much to know, so much to learn, but I'm not alone here. I'm not. The, the 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 community in general knows very little about India, and when shows like Ancient Aliens or others, you know, I get Michael Cremo coming on the show, you know, or other historians that know, you know, Graham Hancock that know a lot about India. Um, we find out very quickly that we don't know nothing, you know, and and India for some reason has been largely ignored. For if it wasn't for shows like. You know, ancient aliens and 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 others bringing up vamanas and and the ancient Sanskrit and and what is and how old it is there. Um, we would never know. We would honestly never yeah. know, Roger. There's, you know, I'll tell you something else. Now, I, I I do my best to study it. I only have so much, you know, so much time. But there's something else about India that that needs to be mentioned that nobody talks about the, the temples of Egypt were abandoned. And when they get abandoned, they get run down and now we have to go and rediscover them. And the archeology span has got to come into play. We've got to figure out what it is or, um, Gdan Padang or Machu Picchu. It was abandoned. It was abandoned, right? We discovered it. India is different. India is a continuous civilization and religion that has been going on for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Those temples haven't been abandoned. They don't look old to us because they still use them. Right? <laughs> they still take care exactly. of them. They still paint them. They're, they're fresh. They're there. And so we don't look at it as being like ancient because we're not. Dis there's nothing to discover, right? It's still there and in use today. That is fascinating to me. It's a fascinating aspect. So when you go and you you talk to somebody about a temple, this temple has been um, up and running and in use for, and then you fill in the blanks, and you're like, oh my god! And we don't have that concept of of age. Right. It's not exactly. Yeah, exactly. it's it's a mind blowing concept. Uh, and we don't understand that here. Well, we kind of do. We know we have McDonald's here. Right. <laughs> we have my, McDonald's. my wife is chomping at the bit to say hi to you. And uh, say something. It, well, what's, it, well, I've never met her. Uh, what's her name? Her name is Nazreen. That's right. Nazreen. How are you, Nazreen? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. You know we've uh, we you know we've wanted you on the show over the years, and and now it's happening in a very strange way. <laughs> I know we were just sitting together, and I was like, "Who are you calling to?" And he was like, "We are on the Jimmy Church uh, radio station." And I was like, "What?" And I was like, "How?" Uh, yeah. I was like, I'm just calling in, uh, Nazarene. So, just 
Just do me a favor, Nazarene, because I'm a fan. Can you say hi, Rita, right now? Just say hi, Rita. Do it for me. I'm a fan. Say hi, Rita. Hi, Rita. There you go. <laughs> so um, uh, that what I, my comment that I wanted to make, and I want you to laugh about this when I say we have McDonald's, in that for us, McDonald's, and what I mean is, McDonald's is, they're all over, they're new. That to us is, if you see a 50-year-old McDonald's here in the United States, that's mm-hmm. like old to us. And it's uh-huh. and, and over in India, where you guys, um, your, your temples, your cities, your civilization, your culture has been ongoing, ongoing. So for you over there, everything is current. Right? We, right. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's like it's it's still fresh. And that's what I mean. We, right. <laughs> we have McDonald's yeah. here. But but um totally, but some McDonald is reaching over there too now. Like if you <laughs> go to <laughs> like um yeah, we fi- in the, some of the public area, McDonald is there and everybody is like we have a culture that everyone prepares like the family prepares the food and we have to eat with family and come together. Right. But right now in capital city the McDonald's is there and people are just like people are like, Oh, why do you need to cook in home? Let's go into the McDonald's because it's everybody is getting mind control into that right now. So Western world is definitely through social media and all these marketing is reaching out to these uh, ancient civilization, which is built on spirituality and family connection. So I feel um, through you and everyone to make more people aware that we need to connect with our on um, the tradition that some of the traditions are very, very powerful and build on the principles of love and compassion and service to nature. And um, so what I wanted to talk here a little bit about is um, the whole world is aware of Buddhism and Buddhist culture, Buddhist philosophy. And right now I'm working on the project in one of the village, which is undocumented. Every year they have floods and whatever they rebuild gets wiped out. And it's very close to where Lord Buddha born, like literally um, five or 10 kilometers away from there. And the people are like, so much intense suffering, like um, they don't have access to clean water and um, a lot of like suffering is happening there. And I'm just wondering why in such a sacred place where Buddha meditated for decades to actually build peace and in that place, why this type of suffering is happening and nobody's talking about it? I know, why I, know I know, I know. I Undocumented. <laughs> Listen, Nazarene, let me, let me, uh, I have to say this for the audience. Um, they don't know about your activism and, and what you have been doing um, around the world for India, uh, the speaking that you do. Uh, the commitment that you have made to all of this. This is your life. This is what you do. And the audience is hearing from you for the first time. Uh, I want right. you I want you to share right now where can everybody go to go and check out the the your projects that are ongoing right now in India on so many different levels of uh, taking care of the communities there. It is what you do. Uh, you deserve a medal. Okay, so please take the opportunity right now to tell everybody where they can go and check it out. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, people can follow us on Facebook at uh, Local Women's Handicraft. And... Uh, um, <laughs> and... Uh, and people can also go to online website, which is www.lwhnepal.com. And that is where they can find all the projects that we are doing and uh, also a lot of the updates that I write about um, the, the, uh, the, pro- the progress, the situations, what are the beauty are there. Like there's a lot of culture which is literally dying. And if uh, right now, these cultures are looking up to the people who are already awake to make sure that we 
in, uh, we keep it safe and keep continuing the um, that spirit is that available to the public. I mean, that ancient culture needs to be alive, you know. And uh, like in my village, my village was very undocumented, completely out of the systems. But some of the culture was so deep, so powerful that actually can bring so much service to the humanity and to the nature. And those cultures are dying literally. So um, I write about some of those um, information so people can go online and check the blogs and stuff that stuff like that. And yeah. the other thing is um, you you make sure that uh, these women that have suffered so greatly have jobs, right? That they can go and do things, that they can go and create, and they can express themselves um, on a on a global scale and 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 have a future. It's it's absolutely incredible your work, Nazarena. I'm not kidding about that. What was the website again? Say it a little slower. Um, it's www.lwhnepal.com. Lwx at nepal.com. Lwh. It's as in a uh, local women's handicraft. Lwhnepal.com. Lwhnepal.com. It'll be up here in Twitter in a second, and I'll retweet it out. But uh, oh, you guys are awesome, man! What a treat, That's man! That's really cool. I, I just want to tell everybody one thing: is um, uh, people are so overwhelmed and they don't know how to support and how to help because the problem is really big. And the one thing they can do is just start asking question that when they wake up in the morning, what do they eat? What do they wear? Which type of energy are they consuming? Are they wearing some things that they know where it comes from? Are they wearing somebody suffering or pain? So my uh, activism is all around, you know, what you act and what you do in daily life. It affects people like um, so many others. And in Nepal, like right now, 1.6 million child labor and only 0.1% women is in business. So women energy, the feminine energy is so oppressed. And especially women in America, like they are, they have the access to technology, they have access to electricity and water and all those things. So how can they become responsible with all these resources, which is flooding into the America to become a responsible way to consume and make sure that whatever they are wearing and using, they know where it comes from and which condition it's made. Because if they don't know, they are maybe contributing into the suffering unknowingly. And uh, um, <clears throat> can you hear us, sir? Yeah, yeah, I can. I was just retweeting uh, LWH Nepal out and uh, getting it out there. But uh, it's uh, it's just amazing. And Nazarene, thank you so much, Roger. Surprise call. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. I've got to head towards a break right here. And uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your night. And Nazarene, uh, will you will you make sure that Roger uh, uh, gets you on this show? I want I want you on yeah. for a full show. You got Thank it. you. We'll do. And and Roger, you can you can join us and translate. Okay, I'm just... <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> have a good night, Jimmy. We'll you, talk to you later. You guys have a great night. Thank you so much. And right. thank you. Thank you, Nazarene. Wow, there you go. That's what I'm talking about, and I just tweeted it out. It's right there, Local Women's, uh, and it's uh, lwhnepal.com. I've got it up right there. I'll be right back. This is Fade to Black. Stay with me. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal Guard, on jimmychurchradio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Poor water quality is a major health issue, and it's only getting worse. Municipalities can't keep up, standards have dropped, and pollutants are increasing. Where does it all end? It ends by keeping the pollutants outside of your home with HydroCare's advanced systems available at Wave Home Solutions. No less than the best purification materials and processes have been developed by HydroCare to provide you with healthy, clean water for drinking, cooking, and showering. HydroCare far surpasses the competition in removing chlorine, odors, iron, lead, 
chemicals, lime skill, and much more. Don't settle for less when it comes to your water. We'll take care of the toughest water problems for you, whether it's from a city or well source. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, call 888-997-WAVE. That's 888-997-WAVE. Or go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. Wave Home Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com Does your basement or crawl space have a damp, musty smell? Well, watch out! That's a sign of too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And that can mean increased mold growth and the buildup of harmful toxins and gases. Don't bother with a dehumidifier. It just circulates the same unhealthy air. Now there's a better way to remove these dangers and odors. It's with the computerized Wave Moisture Control Unit that reduces moisture and expels pollutants. We replaced our old dehumidifier with the Wave unit, and in only three weeks, our basement is dry and the musty smell is gone. Wave units require no maintenance, no buckets of water or filters, and costs only pennies a day to run. Breathe better, live healthier with an affordable, no-maintenance Wave unit. Call 888-717-WAVE, 888-717-WAVE, or visit dryhealthyhome.com, dryhealthyhome.com. Ride the This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black Blend Coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. So are you tired of being tired? Well, then it's time to get the tea. Hey, it's Lisa here to tell you about this all-natural, all-organic tea I've been drinking that has had great results for over 20 years. It's called Life Change Tea, and it's specially formulated to help detoxify and cleanse your kidneys, liver, colon, and blood all at once. The colon is one of the most ignored organs in the human body. The faster that waste is eliminated from the body, the less time that waste sits in our intestines, spreading toxins to our bloodstream. This tea helps cleanse chemicals caused by outside intruders from our entire digestive system. And get this, weight loss can be a side effect. And with continued use of the tea, you can experience clear, healthier, younger looking skin, increased energy, and a happier outlook on life. So if you're tired of being tired, get the life change tea at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. And like me, you'll be glad you did. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. That's a pretty good, uh, that's pretty good, Karen. That's pretty good. I dig that. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. At J Church Radio. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Thursday night, fader night, open lines 323 825 5045 or 323 275 9695 or 818 921 6929. And uh, before I get back to the phones, I got to do this. Boom, done. I'm sorry. I am seriously uh, behind the ball here. And uh, so there you go. All right. Boom, done, done. 
There you go. Oh, man. Computer crash. I hate that. Blue screen right here. You want to see what it looks like? That's a blue screen, man, right there, right in the middle of everything. God, man. Just like that. Blue screen. Boom. Done. Let's go to the other phones. Uh, that phone line's got to reset. I apologize to all of the callers that was on hold right there. So I'm going to swing it back. I'm going to open up this one. 707, you're up next on Fade to Black. Who's calling? You're live. Three, two, one. Hello, you're, Jenny? Yes. Did you say area code 707? Yes, I did. I missed it. I almost missed it again, but I wasn't food in my mouth this time. Okay. This is Janine from Humboldt. Hi, Janine. How are you? I'm doing great, Jimmy. I'm doing much better than I was earlier this week. <laughs> oh, good for you. Good for you. What's on your mind tonight, Janine? Well, um, you're, you're, you're familiar with, with the Defense Information School, with DINFOS, right? Uh, at Fort Harrison. Yeah. Now, do you know that Fort Harrison shut down? Uh, well, I, well I, I heard that part of it did. The Finance Center is still open, right? Well, maybe paychecks come from Ohio. Okay, well, I don't so, know. Okay, so... Uh, but anyway, what I, I, I just... Dinfos was on the base closure list. I, sorry, Fort Bend was on the base closure list in the 90s. Okay. And so they moved Dinfos to Fort Meade. Okay. What else is at Fort Meade? Uh, you tell me. What else is at Fort Meade? The NSA headquarters. Oh yeah, well of course that. Yeah. So <laughs> so they put they put the school for military journalism and public affairs in the same base where the NSA is. Well, that makes sense. I would do that, wouldn't you? I it, it yeah. I don't know. I I don't know. It feel it, it just kind of feels weird to. That, that the NSA may have some. Um, Man, is that a rock? What is that a background? It just feels weird to me that that military journalism. I, I don't know, and I wonder how much military journalism has changed in thirty years when I was there. Right. Um, <laughs> that, back then, they taught us old school journalism. Yeah, you know the yeah. five W's and H. Right. If you're not answering at least four of those six questions, right. who, what, why, where, when, and how, right. it's basically fake news. Right. right. And we were never allowed to use unnamed sources. And so I, it's just something I, I didn't know if you knew about that Dinfos had moved to Fort Meade and why? Why do you think that's a good idea? Well, see, th let me um, uh, let me paint a picture uh, as quickly as I can for the audience. Unless okay. you are in the military or have been raised in a military family and have been exposed to the military's network of broadcast journalism, print, and radio yeah, and they television. Used to call it a fart. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> And so unless you are part of you don't even know about what goes on. So this is what the military has their own newspaper. They've got their own magazine. They've got their own the radio. They've got all over. Um, every army base has got their own newspaper. Then they've Absolutely. got their then they've got their and radio mass, and television. Well, let me. Let I me, did it all. Yeah, let me finish. Hold on, Janine. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Okay. Uh, in that, then they have their <laughs> national and worldwide newspapers and magazines. Then they right. have their local news. They have their own news broadcast. They have their own television yeah. shows. They have their own yeah, radio. Yeah, on board ship we have CCTV. We did the news. Did the news. On board ship. So what you have are um, uh, different uh, ranks of the military. It, it doesn't matter, male and female, that are 
um, going through broadcast journalism school, they graduate, they become newscasters. They become, mm-hmm. and they're in uniform doing the news or the yeah. weather or local, they're out doing local uh, uh, news stuff around oh. the base, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> and then they do the same thing on the radio. Well, they all have to go to school, just like anything mm-hmm. else in the military. If you're going to be in infantry, you go to infantry school. If you're going to be a mechanic, you're going to go. If you're going to do radio, whatever it is, you're going to uh, some technician. You go and get trained, and they do the same thing with broadcast talent. And if you want to get, you can go right now. I am sure you can go to (laughs) military.gov, right, and look up .mil and look up broadcasting jobs in the military. They're all uh-huh. over the place, and and yes, absolutely, and so that's what you did, Janine, and it's 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 really really cool. Now, there are also- oh, Jenny, I got to tell you, I was I was I was a jo on board a ship that we were on a med cruise, and we got rerouted to sixty miles off the coast of Lebanon when he- Hezbollah killed Marine Colonel Higgins in eighty nine. And we spent 32 days sitting 60 miles off the coast of Lebanon. If you don't think that was a little stressful. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's nothing for a surface to air missile to hit a ship. And I was on a tender. In those days, women were only on tenders. They weren't on aircraft carriers yet. Right. But, man, you know, it just um, – and so – if, if you're going to hit a ship, are you going to hit the battleships first, or are you going to hit the ship that fixes those ships? I, you're going to hit both, to be honest with you. But Janine. Probably. Yeah, Janine, Janine. So what was your MOS? What was your gig? Were you I was, a journalist? I was a JO3. When I got out, I was a journalist. Uh, third class petty officer. Wow, that is cool. So I was a JO3. So did they manipulate your mind? Did they tell you what to cover? No, you were no. To- they just they, they just told us how you do journalism and and that that phrase that we had to say over and over. I can neither confirm nor deny the presence nor absence of nuclear weapons. <laughs> oh my! You had to repeat that so many times. <laughs> they didn't want you to forget that. <laughs> right, right. But anyway, we were out there in the. Um, I guess it was Eastern Mediterranean, and I had to go over to um, another ship and get a story over there. So in those days, that meant carrying the the camera, the battery pack, the um, oh, there was like three or four different things, and the only way to get up onto that ship, the USS Virginia was to climb up a Jacob's Ladder up the outside of the ship carrying all that equipment. <laughs> Today, you can do it with your phone, you know? <laughs> right. It, but that was quite the experience, and it's not a sea story. I really did that. <laughs> Janine, Janine, did you, um, with all of your time out there, did you uh, ever see anything you know, in the skies or in the water, you know, any UFOs or USOs? No, I never didn't. Did. I didn't. I, I, I never doubted that they existed, but I didn't ever see anything. At night, you generally had to stay inside, um, right. especially way out there. Um, now, what did they but, tell you? What did they tell you in journalism school? Uh, about the UFO situation, were you allowed to cover it? Did you have if if you they had never it? said it was never brought up? Really? Why not? It was, I don't know. Huh. It was never brought up. You never had a UFO story to cover. No. Nobody I'm came. Sorry. To, nobody. No. I want to know. It's, it's okay if I, it didn't yeah. happen. I I didn't have any of those experiences. I'm sure that if I had spent more time out on deck at night, because you can go outside, you know, you just have to go through certain doors 
so that the inside lights, the lights inside the ship don't show when you open the the door the, uh, the door the door yeah yeah you had to go through certain ones so that you close one door and before you open the outside door so that the lights don't you know so you can't be identified right um and i just if i had had more of an interest in that back then i i might have spent more time on deck at night but i didn't and um well, so, so back opportunity to, missed, I'm sure. Yeah, and back to your point, and Janine, thank you. It's always great to hear your voice. But I want to get back to your point. Uh, to take the the journalism school uh, for the Department of Defense and, and, and swing it over to Fort Meade, where the NSA is, and a bunch of other uh, interagency secret stuff, Yeah, uh, to control information and, and to make sure, especially these days, with the way that information is is put out there, that makes perfect sense. You know, they yeah, they, they got to yeah. control the narrative. Yeah, they did, but we I don't recall anything about what we could not cover. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I'm surprised about that. But I, it I, maybe it, it's it may be different now. I I need to I I liked um, Denfos's Facebook page, but um, I need to go. I, I want to kind of dig into that. How has military journalism changed in 30 years? Right, right, right. I'm just curious about that, well, you know? And, and Janine, see, Janine, you could be a disinfo agent right now, and we wouldn't know. Oh, I, I hope not. Nah, but, you know, stop. You're supposed we to got, We got, we, I, we got I didn't armfuls catch of vaccinations every month. I didn't. I, I didn't. I mean, I quit asking. What What was this for? What's that for? What's you know? It was just stand still and you know. I didn't. Like, don't I, question it. I didn't call you You're out. You're putting right all now. these chemicals in my body, and you don't want me to question it. Janine, but, Janine, you know you're the best. <laughs> Thank you so much. When am I going to see you again? Um, well, I'm hoping to be at ESETI next. Yeah, it's Soltec next year, but I still need to write to Rita and ask her that question. Okay, well, we'll work that. That's a year away. What about Conscious Life Expo? I, I'm i not going to be able to make it. All I don't right. have the money that I had earlier this year. Okay, oh, I get it. Well, yeah, I know. And I like the smaller conferences Yeah, they're, better. I like the smaller, more intimate conferences. I I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, Janine, have a great, safe weekend, okay? Go enjoy yourself. Okay. You too, Jenny. And hi, Rita. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye, Janine. Night, night. Janine, she's amazing. Twitter's lighting up right now. But, uh, yeah, so she was an information officer. She was a journalist in the Navy. Went through the school. That's uh, that's pretty that's pretty incredible. Let's go to area code three hundred three. You're up next on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Well, hello there, Jimmy. It's Linda from Fort Collins. Linda from Fort Collins. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Hanging in there. Had a very good week this week. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I can actually walk around now. So this, we're we're doing good. Yeah, right on. Right uh, on. What's on your mind? <laughs> Well, uh, I told you in the last couple of uh, times that I talked with you about my dad, mm -hmm. and now I want to tell you a little bit about aliens. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. What do you got? <laughs> because we've had a lot of experience with aliens. My dad actually knew J. Rod, the one who came down in the Roswell crash, and he described him in great detail. And uh, what he liked and what he didn't like and that kind of thing. And uh, when I told this to Jesse Marcel, he was said, he said, that's exactly right. That's exactly the kind of things that that are not in the book that we we know about. So uh, in order to be around J-Rod, you had to have a very high ESP. And all my family, we've all had this very high ESP. So we, we have like this... Uh, <laughs> you know, um, ability to, to see things and et cetera. Well, uh, when my kids were little, one day uh, I was rubbing my son's head and uh, there was this 
this wound on the back of his head. And I went, where did that come from? And he said, well, these little guys, the little guys gave it to me. And I'm like, excuse me, run this by me again? And he goes, the little guys, you know, the ones that come in and run around. I had him draw a picture, and it was the Grays. And uh, I just, uh, I was really freaked (laughs) at that point. And he said, yeah, they're really interested in, in my brother. And I'm like, Oh, crap, you know. Um, So anyway, uh, I really got worried about that. And then um, I told the kids, don't worry about it. There's there's no such thing as aliens. We we don't have a problem. And uh, so they were like, okay, okay. Uh, And then a little while later, I heard Whitley Schreiber on uh, Johnny Carson talking about his new book, Communion. And uh, Whitley Schreiber had the exact same uh, experience as my son. Uh, He actually uh, knew that the guys were doing this to him. And uh, I went, oh, my word, this is for real, you know. And then I talked to my ex-husband at the time, you know, my husband at the time, and he said that uh, he'd had experiences as a kid as well. Uh, where he was like floating out the window and that, that kind of thing. But well, but it I, totally I, freaked me out. Well, <laughs> I, uh, before uh, before uh, we run out of time here, I want to get back to J Rod. I mean, when did you uh-huh. find out that your dad your dad actually talked to J Rod? He must have. Oh, he you don't know. Have. Oh, oh, you don't know for sure. Uh, he, he never he never said it, but after talking with Jesse Marcel. Uh, Jesse Marcel said that that's what uh, J-Rod was about. J-Rod hated people. He absolutely hated human beings. And I don't blame him for that at well, all. Have you ever uh, read the book, uh, Interview with an Alien? No, I haven't. Yeah, you should go check that out. That, that yeah. book... Um, uh, I think there's even an audio book of it, if you can go and get it. But anyway... That book, it is the story of a nurse who, by chance, ended up being the one that interviewed uh, J-Rod, or the the alien from uh, Roswell, whatever name that you want to give him. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, 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 And her interview, day after day after day after day. How it started out, how she figured out a way to communicate, um, all t- uh, t- with telepathy, of course. Um, and, wow. And and how and what is amazing about the interview um, is that it evolved. It was very simple in the beginning. It's long too. This book is crazy, uh, long, very detailed, and how uh, this conversation evolves over time. And it, it's a really great book. Uh, and you know what? I think after the show tonight, I'm going to treat Rita to the audio book of Interview with an Alien. And it's a... Uh, well, that it's, sounds fun. Yeah, you should go check it out, Linda. It's, it's really, really good. And since you have this, yeah. you know, direct, indirect uh, contact back to J-Rod, it's a very interesting book yeah, to read. Yeah. And I think the message is good, too. Well, yeah, let, uh, well, there's there's more, but I will save it for another day. Absolutely, and uh, there's there's a lot to do with the aliens that I have found out, and about ninety nine percent of it is deep state. I, it, we know that yeah. it is. I, I I can't wait to hear the rest of it. Thank you so much, Linda. Have a great weekend. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Bye. That's uh it, that that book. It's uh, interview. I think that's what it's called. Oh, man. And I go back with it uh, a long ways uh, when when the story first broke. Let's go to, I don't even know where this call's coming in from. Hi, you're, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. Hey, Micah. I, you know, I was looking at this crazy phone number, and I was like, this could only be, but I didn't want to make the mistake. How you doing, man? I'm doing really good. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, you're a rock star now. Yes, I sure will am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Micah, Micah. So, uh, what's on your mind tonight, my friend? Well, I just wanted to um, phone in to see how you are, Jimmy. I'm doing great. 
I'm doing even better. I've been listening to all your shows. Right. And I wanted to phone in tonight because I haven't been on for a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. You're busy. Yeah. You're you're a rock star now. You don't have yes, time for little. I am you very have, busy with school. Yeah, you don't have time for little guys like me anymore. Mm. Yeah, but now it's half term. Uh, Woohoo! <laughs> So the other night I had on, or I think it was last night, Nick Redfern was on, and I told Nick about you. Yes, I did hear that. Oh, you did? You checked that out? Pretty cool, huh? I went, I came home from my nanny and granddad's because I had a night over there. Yeah. And um, then I came downstairs and straight away dad said, you have been mentioned on Jimmy T- Church. And I was just like, Wow. Impressive. So, so Michael, what what are you talking about on your podcast these days? What are you guys talking about? Just, um, well, we could talk about experiences. We could talk about no. We could do Micah, Area Fifty One. Micah, I asked, I asked, what are you guys talking about on your podcast? What are you guys talking about? We. Yeah, we're talking about well, we get we've only just getting guests on now because we've only just noticed and and we've gone to YouTube and the point is that um, some of them are really good guys because they they experience us to do all of this in the future and. I'm going to obviously keep on going because this is my future at the moment. <laughs> if I keep on doing this. You're doing great, man. You're doing great. And I'm going to give you some advice and never forget what I'm about to tell you. Okay. Every, okay. Your best show is your next one. So forget about the oh, one. Really? Yeah, forget about the one that you just did. Don't even listen to it. Don't even listen to it. Right. Everything that you do is a dress rehearsal for tomorrow. Like right now, Ooh. right now, you see, like right now you're on with me, right? Be yourself. Yes. Just be yourself. Just be Micah. Don't worry about what people do or think or say. Just be yourself. And then the next show, be excited about that because you know that the next podcast that you are about to do is going to be your best one yet. And so that's look forward to tomorrow. And then you're going to get that one done. Forget about it. And then move on to the next one because the next one's going to be even better. And think about that. And as you grow up, man, you're going to look back and you're going to go, wow, wow, this is great. So think about that. All right. And and that that's my little lesson uh, for the day. Right. Okay, Jimmy. Don't forget. See, you already forgot it, Micah. You already no, forgot. No, I have not forget it. Okay. I will not forget it, Jimmy. <laughs> Don't you worry. How close are you to the water? Can you look out your I window am... and see and see the ocean? Um, no, not particularly. I'm only like a couple of miles from the beach. Right. And and do you actually eat Dover sole? <laughs> um. Do you, no, uh, do you, I don't uh, like fish and chips. Why you don't go? You do stop, Micah. There's no way you don't go down to the <laughs> harbor with everybody else and get fish and chips and look at the boats and check out the seagulls. I get sausages and chips. Oh, man, you got to do fish and chips, man. Sausage and chips is good too, though. And, I don't like the batter around it, but the white. The white uh, the fish, batters, I love it. The batter's the best part. Hey, do they still, mm. um, and your mom's going to laugh when I ask this question I hear in the background. Um, do they still serve it like in newspapers? All right? No, they don't actually anymore. Oh, they don't see your uh, mom. No, actually, sorry, yes, they do. I, <laughs> I see your mom said, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Where can everybody listen to your podcast before I go to commercial? Where can everybody go and listen to it? Um, you can either listen to our Facebook Live or our YouTube Live. Okay, and what's it called? Um, Fascination Street with Jimmy Pearson and Meek Pearson. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. You're a rock star, man. And Give my best to your mom and dad, will you? They're probably right there. 
babysitting. Oh, okay. Right? Hey, Micah? Yeah. Do you have school here in a bit, or are you off? I'm off until Tuesday. Okay, so there you go. So you don't have school in the morning. Okay. All right, so enjoy the rest of the show, man, and, and, and just thank you. You're welcome, Jimmy. Thank you so much. The Fascination Street with Jimmy Pearson and Micah Pearson. Thank you, Micah. Have a great night. Great day. Bye, Jimmy. Go get some fish and chips. Go down. Have your parents take you down. <laughs> and check out okay, the batter. Okay, Jimmy. Check out the batter. I'll talk to you, Micah. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Micah Pearson right there. Man, that's cool. I mean, it doesn't get any better, really, when you have a rock star like Micah Pearson calling into Faded Black here on a Thursday night here, Fader Night. All right. I'm going to take a quick break, and when I come back, of course, it's going to be more of your phone calls. Let me do a few things here, and I'll be right back after this short break. It's Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. I'll be right back. Stay with us. Listen to my boy, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All Numana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the Numana Pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the Numana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autograph Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously, go Beckley Tappy. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Hi folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefit. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and my family is safe because of Numana Emergency Food Storage. Just go to the Numana banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Promo code Jimmy10. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. 
Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com Welcome back, Payton Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I just got the word. I just got the word. Okay, a couple of things. One, the best Chinese food in Burbank is waiting for me after the show tonight. I cannot wait. My daughter, Deanna, hooking me up. The best spring rolls you've ever had in your life. I cannot wait. We've got 25 minutes. And then I get to shut this baby down. There you go. And also, Rita, she comes in. So I did my little rant right at the beginning uh, talking about those uh, chia. Oh, man. Can't say chia seeds. But um, my rant, and I was talking about uh, Almond Joys. So she comes in during the break. She goes, you got Almond Joys in here? I said, no, but I got coconut clusters. <laughs> she shut the door and walked out. Uh, it was classic, classic. All right, let's go back to the phones. Go to, uh, let's see, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's go to area code 601. You're up next on Fade to Block. Who's calling? This is Jake. You hear me? Yeah, I got you, man. Who's this? All right, this is uh, Jake from uh, South Mississippi. I was going to uh, talk to you about a uh, UFO event that I had several months ago. Okay. You need to speak up, though. Okay. Um. One thing being said is is that um, have you ever heard of a UFO event that had a flashing light on the UFO? Well, we talked about it all night tonight. Had a few of those. Okay. So one night that um, we saw a seven different figures in the in the sky, and then every every seventh one, every every one of them had a triangle of red light so with that being said so every single one had a triangle a small triangle of red light that were in a uh a line and they they all sounded like kind of like a generator you know how a generator sound right 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 okay so this is about 2013 so it was kind of Right before, or right after the whole drone, uh, you know, aerial drone situation started going on through, you know, uh, technology, all this and that. But we'd look up in the sky, and it was seven um, objects that had a triangle of three red lights. Wow! That were completely in line. However, they all had a uh, like every one of them had three three red lights in a triangle that were that were st- the light of the the red light was on it would stay on however every single little object had a flashing light upon of it but the the sound of it was ridiculous because it just sounded like seven generators just floating in the sky how high up i would say probably 700 to a thousand yards up not not too high at all yeah not too high about a half a mile that's that's close enough to see what was going on were they moving around or were they like in a formation no no they were all in a completely straight line so it it was wow it was seven of them and then out of all seven there was a there was a small triangle of red lights and then it was just wow 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 I mean, just pretty much how a generator or a pressure washer, you know, would sound is yeah, yeah. gas generated. What what happened? What did they? Uh, what did they do? It sounds like almost 
almost like maybe it could be our technology. What did you think? Do you think it was us with some crazy stuff, or do you think it was, you know, possibly E.T.? Um, kind of both, because Good at, answer. at the time, at the time we, we walked outside, and then um, we heard the sound. The, the first thing that happened is we heard the sound. So when we heard the sound, it like it, we're in rural South Mississippi, so there's a lot of farms going on. So when you hear something that sounds like a generator or a pressure washer or a tractor or something, you immediately just look out over you know the next field or the the land behind you or the side of you. And then at that time we we looked around and there was nothing there. And then we looked up and then there were seven figures like figures in the air that you know in a triangle each seven had a very small triangle like one two three um flights did they fly did they fly away or did they just hang out it what was weird about it was they just consistently flew in a straight line and they just flew away into the in the distance until actually it just went away wow 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 that's pretty interesting man what year did this happen about 2014. 2014. And what was so weird is every uh, out of the seven of them, each seven had a blinking light on. Huh. Huh. Very interesting. And it, it, it's a it's a weird sound that you're describing too. It almost sounds like engines, but you didn't. Yes. But did you hear the sound of rotors like a drone would have? Or did no. you see anything like that? The, the, and then the objects themselves, um, and I've only got a little bit of time left. I've got a bunch of calls, and I want to get these in before the end of the night here. Um, sure. did, were they, you described the, the, the triangles of the red lights, but were each one of these objects a solid triangle? No. Oh, so, so you, we, there were seven of them in line, and then out of one, one of each seven had a very small triangle. So there's one, two, three, of like one up front, two in the back, lined in the triangle of one. That was one, and then one through seven. Huh. And what was the shape of each individual craft? They, they was all individually a triangle. However, they was all exactly in line with each other, but they had their own same distinct noise. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Wow, that's a that's a that's a pretty good sighting, man. That's a pretty good sighting. I I don't even know how to respond to that. So seven black triangles, seven each one had three red lights on it in the shape of a triangle, and every Correct. and yeah. every seventh one had a white light. Yes, every one, oh, before I let you go, or you let me go, is every single one, as of what I just mentioned, had a, had a blinking light just as a an airplane would. What was so weird about it is every single one of them had an airplane like blinking light of it. Huh. But yet they were black triangles. Yes. Yeah, I got you. What was your name again? Uh, Jake. Jake, thank you for the phone call, man. That's a great sighting, and thank you for sharing that with us. All right, great, greatly yeah. appreciate yeah. it. Love your show. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, man. Have a great night. That's uh, that's pretty cool, right there. Let's. I'm going to try to get all these calls in. Let's go to five one four. You're up next on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hello, Jimmy. This is Fred from Montreal. Hi, Fred from Montreal. How are you? <laughs> all right, I'm doing good. Uh, pot is legal now here. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. It's pretty weird. Yeah, it's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> so what's on your mind tonight, Fred? Well, first thing, uh, well, just I'll make it quickly. Uh, I'm very surprised that I learned on Tuesday listening to Richard Dolan about this trademark. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the whole story. I just listened to the show. I wasn't sure what was going on. And I've looked at the uh, messages uh, on, on your uh, YouTube site. Uh, is that what happened? Is, is, is Corey Good really wants to trademark SSP and 20 and back and all? I, 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 I guess so. You know, I'm not his attorney or his, his trademark attorney, 
Um, no, but is that what you heard? Is that what you were talking about with well, Richard? Well, that, that's what we were talking about with Richard. And see, the thing is, Fred, when when it comes down to, look, I copyright every show that we do. Okay? I'm in broadcast. Okay. And so if you are out there and you have, it doesn't matter who you are. You could make wine and or you could you know it's tennis shoes it 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 just doesn't matter if you have a company where you're going to make products and you are going to have a good or service whatever it is t-shirts uh cell phones whatever it is and you're going to name it then you're going to trademark that name you know that's that's it so if Corey, and i don't know what his business ventures are i know that he is mention stuff uh, publicly, and you can go and look at his trademarks, that he's trademarking stuff for comic books and maybe shirts and posters, and he's got a movie coming out next week, and you're going to, you know, you're going to protect your your stuff. You know, that's it. That, But no matter what, uh, uh, that doesn't mean you can't talk about it. You know, I mean, you don't own the word. Like, okay, I'll give you an example. Nike, right? It's a pretty big company. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's what's their what's their trademark slogan that they have? J- uh, just do it. Just do it. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, wait a minute. You just said it. Does that mean you can't yeah. say just do it? <laughs> of course it doesn't. Right. No. And, yeah. No. No. I, uh, right. So, and it doesn't mean that you couldn't use just do it somewhere else in your life. You know, I don't know, but that that's what we're talking about here now. And, and that's it. So is, is Corey doing it? Is are others doing it? I assume that they are. No, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Well, my point of view, my point of view is if I was one of these guys, I would do this to inform the, pu- the public, to wake up the population to what's going on. I I wouldn't be thinking about making money out of this. That wouldn't be my thought, you know. That wouldn't be my motivation. And for him to do that, it really raised a couple of red flags, you know. But somebody, uh, somebody uh, is not a, okay. All right. So uh, Eric Von Daniken wrote a book called Chariots of the Gods. Sold eight heard billion it. copies of it. Right. He's yeah. not allowed to make money. Well, oh, you got a good point there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't understand. Richard Dolan has a publishing company of which he publishes books. He's not allowed to publish books or any of his authors. Yeah. Yeah. You got a good point. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know. Ancient Aliens, the TV series, they're not allowed to make money on that and sell commercials. Uh, it just yeah. doesn't make sense to me. You know, so, so what? He's he, he's missing money. He, he needs money. So he thought, well, I can make money out of this. Is that you think he he was thinking? I I don't even. I just understand. find it weird. I just I mean, How? I just find it really weird. Why? Because uh, when you do stuff like this, it, you, you don't go into these things to make money. You go into these things to inform the public. You want to wake he's, up the population. Oh, uh, well, and. Uh, Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I understand. Okay. Now, he's been putting out, Corey and others, uh, there have been tens of thousands of books published on UFOs, magazines, TV shows, documentaries. Corey, as far as I know, is not the first one. And um, if you go and look at uh, so many, you pick a name in ufology, you pick a name, right? Are you saying that they don't have the right to publish? They've all published books. You know, Richard Dolan right now, you mentioned Richard. Richard does a YouTube broadcast live a couple times a week. He's making money. He's not allowed to do a YouTube broadcast. No, no, no! It's not that he, he can make money. All that. Well, it's not that. It's, it's just the, to trade market uh, SSP and twenty and back and all these uh, uh, terms that he wants to own, that he wants to take, that he wants to control. I find uh, that that's weird. Not, I mean, that's, you're, you're, that is completely untrue. 
No. No, no it is. It, what do you mean control? If I if my show is called Fade to Black and I trademark Fade to Black, I'm controlling you? I'm controlling No, but nobody can use it. Nobody of can Of course they it. can. I just proved it to you. I just said okay. just do it. Is trademarked okay. by Nike. What, 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 they they control. Just do it. <laughs> I mean, I no, just, no, they don't. No, it's I probably mean, me that have a. Uh, uh, I probably don't understand the completely uh, terms of a trademark or copyright. There, I just find if somebody out there, if somebody out there says, uh, and it doesn't matter. You could be talking about Facebook. You could be talking about Microsoft. You can talk about Corey Good and SSP or whatever, and these companies or these people or these individuals are going out and trademarking, that's their right. That doesn't mean you can't, that that they own the word. If that was the case, there wouldn't be any words left in the English language. <laughs> and and I you know, and I, I know, yeah. couldn't talk right now because we wouldn't be allowed to use any words. So that, that, that part of yeah. it, you know, now... Um, what I have issues with, and this we will find this out about Corey. Let me be very, very frank. If Corey or anybody else out there, anybody, it starts to act like they are uh, owning words and are going to control the narrative or tell people what they can and just take somebody to court because they used something, they will be finished in this industry. They will be yeah, finished yeah. in ufology. They will be ignored. They will be banished. They will be sent to the corner, yeah. and they will have no respect from anybody, including myself. I'll okay. make you that promise. Okay. And that's that's okay. that's the truth. So you want to jump out of the zone and 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 make that mistake that's on you so i don't think that is i don't think that's the case i look um we know that and somebody just you know published uh uh, uh of course it was mark the uh the letter the cease and desist letter that uh, that Corey sent out to jason rice that right there is a mistake yeah, in that yeah. you don't you do not do that you don't do it and and that was sent out a couple of hours before Jason Rice was on this show. Now, that sends a bad message to the community. If you are about enlightenment and you're about uh, 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 going to the next level and another dimensional being and 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 love and, and meditations and, and peace and, and all of that, if that's what you're about, you don't send this letter. You know, yeah, and you don't send it yeah. to Jason Rice two hours before this broadcast. I find that completely yeah. offensive. So that's there it, you yeah. go. So maybe maybe Corey uh, will come out and 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 apologize to Jason. Maybe he'll say, you know what, it was a mistake. I my attorney was out of control. It shouldn't have been sent out, and I apologize for that. If you know, I, I don't know what the future is, but certainly yeah. the the this community by seeing something like that would would be a little bit more understanding but that letter yeah. going out no it sends the wrong message and that letter has nothing to do with jason it has everything to do with if they've got problems with a company that uh, is using these terms or possibly will you send it to that company whoever it is send it to me send it to fade to black but you don't mm -hmm. you don't send it to the guest on this show that sends a wrong yeah. message and the community is never going to forget that you know, and know. That, that's the truth. All right, Fred, I hope I answered all of your questions, man. Behave. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yes, and I really like what Richard Dolan, just to finish, when he said uh, two hours in the show, you were talking about pot, and he, and Richard said uh, uh, that he doesn't mind that it's legal, but he said if you want to be on the top of your game, you shouldn't be using. So I stopped the, the pot on Tuesday. Hopefully, well, because of that. Oh, duh, man. Never listen to Richard Dolan. <laughs> no, I have to. No, 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 no. It's like Richard really said said it, it when I, I when I when I heard when I heard that 
Uh, it was midnight here in Montreal, and when I heard that, it just smashed in my head. I like, know. look, look it's know. time. I'm forty. I'm forty-eight years old. It's time for me to stop and be on the top of my game. And right. I think that was a message that Richard, uh, that I heard, and it really uh, res- resonates into me. Like, okay, this is this is enough. We got. I've been smoking for twenty years. Not every day, but it's enough. And I think Richard really said it uh, clear. Like, you got to be on the top of your game. So. Uh, uh, I, I stopped the pot on uh, Tuesday. So. All right. Well, I hope that <laughs> Thanks, works. Thanks, Richard. I, I like it. And thank you, uh, Jimmy. I love you. You Great show. I just enjoy your show so much. So yeah, much. thank you so much, Fred. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, man. And you know, I'm you just joking. You know, I'm joking about Richard. He's the best. Thank you so much. He's the best. I'll talk okay. to you. Okay. Okay, man. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. I got time for one more call. Let's uh, go to, man, I got one minute. And I've got so many people on hold. I feel so bad. Let's go to area code. 281, last call, couple of minutes. Who's calling? Hey, Jimmy, this is Liz in Houston. Hi, Liz in Houston. What's on your mind? I'm sorry, it's at the end of the night, but I wanted to squeeze in one more call. Sure, I'm a first-time list, uh, caller and a long-time listener. Right but on. I have an experience that is so unusual, and I think that's why I'm so drawn to all these shows. I'm trying to find something similar. Uh, when my daughter was just a year old, it was back in ninety. I was experiencing, I'd wake up and I felt like there were little tiny, like almost eight inch tall alien beings and even an alien ship in my room. And I thought that was like a dream. You know, you think I must be dreaming, but after it happened about three or four times, I I could smell like the smell of carpet burning. Really? And I felt around on the carpet and I could feel like, you know how plastic carpet feels when it's kind of been heated. Like, you know, like a rougher texture. Right. And it just, I thought, still, I thought, this has got to be a really bizarre dream. And in the same apartment we lived in, we had everything electrical going wrong. We had our can opener, our microwave, our lights would burn out all the time. And one day I walked into the living room and on the TV there was a talk show. And they were talking about exactly what I was experiencing. Hmm. And I thought, I can't, am I, you know, now I know I'm not dreaming, but am I dreaming? They're really talking about this kind of thing happening to people. And I've looked everywhere. I've searched everything. I've not seen anything like that. Have you ever heard anything like that? Well, uh, you know, you have to kind of look at this two ways. One, is it just a coincidence? Two, is it... Uh, synchronicity through the universe, connecting all of these things up at the same time to give you some kind of message. Or three, were you listening to this in your sleep and it caused the dream? Right? Could be. Could be. Maybe. Yeah. I, when I was younger, I'd seen a, a very small alien craft also. And so that's, you know, and then one other time I've seen a really bright light that was like the ball, like the, the softball, you know. And other than that, I've not seen anything or, and I just, you don't need to see Liz, Liz, you don't need to see anything else. You've seen enough. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's pretty cool though. Eight inches tall. That's uh, yeah, very, very tall. Yeah. Wow. Like Gulliver's travels. Yeah. Almost like, I wonder if it's something like a child's dream. Yeah. Yeah. Like seeing an old, um, UFO comic book or something from right. the late 60s. Something. There was yeah. there was a Twilight Zone. I've got to go. I've got 30 seconds. But there was a Twilight right. Zone and uh, uh, where they went to another planet. And, you know, so the astronauts are walking around and they look down and they see this, like, patch of green. And, and, and they look like, and it was actually a city. And the, and the, the aliens are like a quarter inch tall. And they're down there. Well, anyway, um, and they're walking. They're killing. You know, it, you've got to go see that Twilight Zone. It reminds everything was like in miniature. And, I do. I want to. Yeah, it's pretty cool, Liz. I got to go, man. I got to rock. I got to right, get out of here. Good night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too. Bye bye. Thank you, man. That's what a bunch of great calls tonight on Fade to Black. Just amazing, and that's why I love Thursdays. Thursdays is the best. Getting together with all of you just makes my my week right. 
And so now I'm going to get out of here. Uh, my daughter's bringing home some spring rolls and some amazing fried rice, best in Burbank. So I'm going to go and do that. And, of course, uh, probably enjoy some of those coconut vegan clusters. And I want everybody out there to have the most amazing, fun, fantastic, safe weekend. Go and do it. Cook it up. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Camarion. Oh, by the way, next week is uh, Halloween. So we got all Halloween all week long. Don't forget, we got Shaw, the Loon Witch, next Wednesday night on Halloween. I cannot wait. We got ghost stories. We got everything next week. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Camurri on show. It's produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew, the Geek, Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. And syndication is KGRA, the planet. This broadcast on a copyrighted 2018 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in their own universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Until Monday, everybody be safe. Go Beckley Tepe.